It's okay. You can have multiple husbands. An Australian one, an American one. And they'll never know. They'll never know. <laughs> the stream literally started with, it's okay. You can oh, have wait. multiple husbands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, Jackie's oh. boy. How's it going? <laughs> um, uh, Yikes. Oh my god, dude. he's in chat. I'm it makes saying. sense. That's mm -hmm. why Jackie's got so many girlfriends and boyfriends in chat, right? Uh, that's why everybody mm -hmm. claims Zania. Welcome back to some more Red Wagon Inn, everybody. How is it going in 2021? Hi. Our first stream. Glad to be back with everybody. We're so old. So older, therefore no. wiser, I, I yes. would say. And that this stream will be more mature. Uh, we're making many changes to be more mature, aren't we, guys? That's a lie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't find this. GFY <laughs> stands for Go Frick Yourself now. Uh, it's much calmer, much more PG. We're trying to appeal to the kids. True. Uh, and yeah. So now this whole stream is just Where's TikTok. Where's my money? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, trendy children. Yes, we said Frick because we're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck a new rule. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Glad to be back, everybody. Uh, we have fun season planned. Last time, I guess we could call a season since a lot happened, so I do not envy whoever has to do the recap tonight. You might also notice we're down one person because one of us is having a little babu, so good for them. A babu. They're having a little babu. An um, entire babu. One whole babu. Hope she has a good babu. <laughs> babu. Stay babu. away from the dingoes. Not to be mistaken for Bobo, the indigenous pun maker. Yes. <laughs> She's having a Bobo. God rest her soul. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I'm so sorry for her. <laughs> puns. <laughs> <laughs> Just comes right out the womb. Awesome. Uh, we have a lot to go over. Um, we have a few things that I know people want to talk about because it's been two weeks since we've been able to talk <clears> about <throat> things. So first, why don't Alex, why don't you kick us off? <gasps> Big announcement. Kick them off. So, as everyone may or may not know, uh, if you were here for Lud Life, Level Up Dice has just announced their first ever Kickstarter, which is huge for lots of reasons. One, because I am so I was so not going to do Kickstarter. I was like, never do a Kickstarter. Um, but I was convinced otherwise. And two, because of the scope of what it is. Um, so, these are our complete character dice, and I have Salt's complete character dice available for me today. Um, and I probably won't be able to show them off, but I'll show you my favorite. So this is my Rogue D20. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Hopefully we get... Focus, come on, focus. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, there it is. Wait, wait, there's a 20. There's a 20 over here. It's coming. This is really it's, hard it's to do coming. when I'm going to the camera. <gasps> oh, ooh, wow. So, um... I'm going to see these dice, and they better roll good for me. Um, otherwise, I'll cancel the whole Kickstarter. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> The, the scope of this is amazing. Like, every single die has its own <gasps> design and pattern. I'm probably showing off stuff I probably shouldn't be showing off yet, but who cares? Oh, Come on. runs here. Hi, Jeff. Anyway, Joe, sorry. Um, <laughs> we have wow. currently over 200 different designs, and they're starting off in five colors, which means that there's a thousand different dice combinations. And we're probably going to about 40 colors, which is like 8,000 different dice combinations. So literally... If you want to have one of everything, you'd have to get like 8,000 dice. Um, You'll have to support which just... level up dice for years <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you want one of everything. Exactly. Um, but just the scope of it is insane. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. When I got the sample run put through the laser etching and we, we laid it down, it took up nearly two trestle tables just for the full set of um, all five colors. And I'm just sitting here going... This is a lot of dice. Um, but yeah, there's some super exciting stuff. And I will probably be doing some sneak peeks on some other Red Wagon Inns as well. Um, including probably my favorite project that I can't mention yet. But it starts with the letter M. That's, that's a design. Uh, but yes, you should check it out. There's a whole bunch of posts about it on Pezo, Level Up Dice. It goes live Tuesday next week, which means it, when Red Wagon Inn is, we'll be live. And I'll probably be sitting there watching the ticker count and interrupting iwi good <laughs> but yes yeah, super exciting awesome um, oh and finally really no actually i can't mention that i'm on a leash today guys and i will pass it back to you Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Bree isn't here to control Alex, so uh, everybody. Oh, Atlanta no, Bree is here. She, she just can't she see is. them. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. good, good. <laughs> she's here. She's always here. <laughs> awesome. Um, anybody else have anything they want to plug before I show off some of the stuff that other people have? Oh, to plug? I do. Medusa made me a little Atta. <gasps> oh, that's so oh, awesome. Horrible. Where's my money? Where? <laughs> That's so cute. It's great, and I love it. And he sits right here by my computer. Hey, what a good remembrance for a, uh, you know, a dead pet and whatnot. Uh, Remember what I told you, chat. Remember what I told you. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) Right. We have a few other things to show. It's not my fault. I didn't kill the pet. Uh, Well, this time you did. (laughs) Fair enough. Last time it was me. (laughs) (laughs) This time it was everybody insulting, you know, Ithka and the Traveler. It's not my fault. You know, I just, I'm here to, I'm here to do chat's will. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Uh, A few things I want to be able to show off. uh, A few pieces of art that were done and a few other really cool things that are coming up too. Uh, (laughs) First off, uh, Elisa Death uh, put on a really cool picture uh, because their obsession, they said, was the Red Wagon Inn. uh, But their kid's obsession was... uh, Dragon Ball Z, um, a bridge, yes. which is amazing. Uh, so I think this is supposed to be a Nappa team, uh, and I love it. Yes. <laughs> um, Blazelin, which I need to get Blazelin's other art, and I will do that during the break because I haven't done that yet, uh, made a fan art of Gideon, which looks awesome. I love the little zipper on the little sleeping bag bug thing. Oh. Yeah. We also have uh, <laughs> from Bobo. <laughs> Sorry, this one's my favorite. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. How in, uh, you know, their favorite outfit of all time. Oh, that's... <laughs> I that's saw amazing. the whole Twitter post where that came and where that was inspired. Uh, and so if you're not on the Discord, you absolutely need to be on the Discord. Uh, and you may have Bitch, noticed two new official pieces of art uh, from <gasps> Safi. Uh, Howe's character, which is Jakey's character, who he's playing now, uh, which looks awesome. Awesome. Uh, absolutely love it. Uh, and Ren's character, also looking <gasps> mighty dapper. Uh, and those will be dapper. under their little under their little portraits from now on, so you know what they look like, because that's what they look like. Speaking uh, of dapper, I think Dapper Dan's here. <laughs> dapper Dan, the push-up man? Heck yeah, man. <laughs> the push-up man, man. <laughs> uh, we also have two giveaways tonight, which come from Hacks Tech. Uh, so they're actually sets of dice they just sent me to have, but uh, I have so much cool Hacks Tech stuff that I was like, oh, cool, I'll just give them to you guys. <laughs> Um, so I took two videos of them earlier because they were, it's hard for the camera to do them justice, but we have two sets of the color shifting sets that they have here. One of them's this kind of grayish stone that turns red and green. Uh, and then one of them's this blue that turns green with red lettering and it's very cyberpunk E looking. Uh, so both of those are really cool. Uh, and those are going to be the two sets we have to give away tonight. Um, so mm-hmm. whoever wins one of the giveaways, you'll get a surprise one in the mail. So hope you're excited <clears throat> for that. Pretty. Yeah. Ooh, wee. Hackstech's always been super nice to me uh, and very supportive. So love Hackstech. Go check them out if you haven't checked them out. Right. Seems like it's about time. Everybody do a roll for recap. Uh, it's been two oh, weeks. So you got to recap no. in vivid detail. And if it's not Drew, good luck. All right. New dice. Don't let me down. I'm going to start off with a natural 20, baby. Ooh. Let's go. Uh-oh. That nat 2021 20, year. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks for the I'm thanks for the 16. pretty deep strew and thanks for showing me this cool logo whenever I roll good. Wait, let's see if now can you I can do, do it. The, you can do it. If not, here it is right here on my mug. There it oh. is. Look at that. Who's that? That's a pretty cool mug. <laughs> thanks. Oh, I just got okay. it today. <laughs> uh, I got a sixteen. Oh, no. Sixteen. I got a fourteen. How got a nat oh. twenty? Zania salt. 15? 16 as well. Oh. oh, shoot, it actually is me. <laughs> ah! I was like 14. You better okay, get everything. I'm, I'm bringing up the notes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so everybody, hope you're here for two hours because uh, a lot <laughs> happened last time. Right, okay. so what happened at the last episode of 2020? Right, so whence we last left our heroes, quote unquote, uh, they were currently in the middle of I guess pissing off uh, the Traveler, uh, or not pissing off the Traveler, uh, they were in town after they had gone on a teleportation roundabout where Gideon had left the Traveler off in the Time Scar. They recently grabbed his amulet of unknown origins and unknown capabilities other than teleportation at seemingly endless amounts, 
Uh, and from there, they teleported back to the town. They kind of argued about what they were going to do for a while. They saw Savage, and he asked for help in the town, seeing as how they're still doing all right. Carlene still is unconscious. Dane is nowhere to be seen. During that time, Summer wanted to try and help because they heard some screams from upstairs. So Summer ran upstairs uh, following Salt, uh, where there were two of the maidens that they had seen before, uh, at least in the garb of the Red Wagon Inn, and they were going to try and help them down. While that was happening, team wandered from inside the inn uh, and was eventually followed by Gideon, who was going to check on him and see what he could do to help as well. When they were out there, they looked up and was, is that a bird? Is that a plane? No, it's Gideon's house uh, as the house falls on top of Gideon and team. For lack of a better descriptor, as I said before, these shows end directly at four hours, where in a normal D&D session you would just continue what you're doing if it gets, you know, very uh, heavy. And so they were still kind of in the fight, even though, oh my gosh, whoa, isn't she classic? Isn't she classic? What the? Jeez. Donated 20 tier one subs. Holy crap. Holy, thank you. Money, money, money. Wow. She is a classic. Absolutely. Money. You get a point of inspiration, isn't she classic? Because that's awesome. <laughs> how about wow, two? That that easily deserves two. Hold on, that's how I can get a point of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you better come like, get your man. <laughs> um, so the house fell, and it fell on Gideon and team through some heavy amounts of damage, as well as nat ones and a couple other bits of buffoonery. Uh, Gideon and team. Died. Our first two player character perma deaths, at least for now. Uh, during those deaths, the traveler came back in and said, <laughs> Jake said, Whoa, hold on. <laughs> what me? Is that your first? Your first player character death? That's the first Ooh. character to die for Ooh, it, You were guest at that time. Mind? You were guest at that time. Oh, you. you were guest. Now you're player. Now you're full player. <laughs> Uh, this is the first full player characters, uh, whatever legal note I need to say out to not get any GFY. <laughs> um, team and Gideon also roll will saves. I miss one week and team died? <laughs> yes, team and Gideon did pass away. Uh, so in their passing, they went on to another realm, which we get to in a minute. Salt and Zania did their best to try and help, but they just don't have the capabilities to bring them back after a blow that big summer seemed baffled, teleported to the faking, asked for help, saying he knows where the traveler is. Faking said, go to the spirit realm, or, or, or go find a, a strong hearth right here, right now. I need you to go. Uh, and she's like, oh, okay, uh, then you'll help me. And he's, he's, yeah, of course. So she goes, goes to the spirit realm. Who does she see there besides Gideon and team at their first time in the realm between realms? Not heaven, not hell, as they didn't have anyone that they specifically followed that would bring them to heaven, and they weren't abhorrently bad to where they would go directly to hell so it was up to this forging uh, dwarfish woman who was forging some souls as she was called soul forge to determine their fate she determined they were good enough and allowed to live in the realm between realms summer came in and was like yo uh, i actually need this soul forge lady and she pieced out of there they came back uh to the fey wild and then they came back to the regular <laughs> plane of Asterion. Actually, I think the Fey King actually went to Asterion before uh, Strong Hearth. But hey, they're all there now. The Traveler's there as well. There's essentially the office scene where they're all sitting there with finger guns. Like, uh, I'm not going down for this. They, yeah, they're all kind of pointing uh, very deadly weapons at each other. Salt takes the amulet and geets it at them to try and uh, bide some time and get away. As the rest of the group, Salt, Zania, and... Uh, Summer run along the sand and head directly north, uh, trying to get out of there as best they can. They go up, aiming to go to uh, Ithka's um, lair so that they have somewhere to hide. When they do go there, they meet a, a lion person, uh, a Leonin, who is named uh, Ziraz. While he's there, uh, Zania's like, what, another one? Okay, this is a odd place to find you. He guards them while they go to sleep. After... Uh, kind of before they go to sleep, a lot of stuff happens. Uh, Robert comes back. They also meet a guy named Howe, who seems to be very in touch with the Whisperer, uh, as he was told to come here by the Whispers on the wind after Summer prayed very, very heavily to the Whisperer. Salt basically has forsaken any and all forms of gods, uh, as he doesn't like any of them right now. 
They went to sleep, they woke up, the, the Leonin left, and now there's a new wood elf character named Ren who has come back. Uh, I had to skip over a lot or else we would be here for a long time uh, in the just kind of dialogue portions of things. Things were very emotional. People are okay now uh, in the loose sense of the word they were dealing with it realizing that the whisperer helped uh, and sent robert and how here uh, on summer's prayers to do what they needed so after that they were going to go back to ashburn and see from a distance what they could do to help as they're climbing down the cliffs they're in the very last clip top and we left off with with his amulet the traveler grabbing Summer and saying, hey, I need to borrow her, you know, for all intents and purposes, and piecing out of there. Did I do good enough compared to your notes, Drew? There are two things I, I want you to this. see if you missed. They happened in the plane between planes. Oh, yeah. Two they, things. They started uh, ghosts and or goblins, uh, I think is the uh, D&D name. Uh, ghouls and goblins might have been the uh, okay. D&D name. That's one. Thing. Um, Something else very important happened there. Is it, is it actually very important? <laughs> Depends who you ask. Uh, then what was the other thing? Gideon watching the guy poop. Why oh. does he keep looking at me? He keeps making eye contact with me. Does he just not stop? Is that his afterlife? Is he stuck there? Someone get him some toilet paper. Yeah, but there's nothing that's, else in there. <laughs> it's, it's good enough, Ryan. I it's, think you deserve an inspo. It's Tyrone was Lannister. He just does what he does uh, when they die. <laughs> it's, it's just yeah. the, uh, right. What happens when you eat ethereal food? Being that it's a new season, another announcement that I wanted to make <gasps> is all inspos and GFYs have been wiped clean. So starting today is when we're getting brand new ones. So anything that you have Isn't before that convenient. is gone. <laughs> I had no GFYs left. Y'all used them all. I'm so sorry, I'm really Adam, I didn't for know. <laughs> um so i was wondering if even theirs <laughs> yes even bobo's everybody gets a reset <gasps> oh so yeah, alex and really bobo mean. can race again please don't does that mean there's only two inspos in the game at the moment uh there is one to me and, and one to, to isn't, isn't she classic. classic correct earn your wow. inspos and we'll go from there um but i'll use mine you know no, no okay yeah. uh, i saw inspo so i'll take it gladly Woo. uh I'm in my new place. Very excited to get this Dungeons and the Dragons rolling. Everybody good to go? Yeah. Awesome. Everybody grab a chair, pull up a drink, even though those are backwards, and enjoy some Red Wagon Inn. Where we last left our heroes, the Traveler had just poofed away summer. You are all left standing atop the last cliff face with a puff of gray smoke. Currently, Ren, Zinnia, Howe, Salt, and Robert. Sit there. <coughs> oh, who was that? Where did I assume, Summer? I assume Summer. that was a friend of yours. Summer? No. Where I'm is, starting to assume that wasn't a friend of yours. Where is Summer? Summer? Definitely not a friend. What? Oh. So, uh, someone took Summer then. Uh, uh, uh. Anybody mind what? telling what's going on? I elbow Ren and immediately go like. <laughs> <laughs> Ren just stops. <laughs> Salt. Zinnia, who was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm Salt, yes. Um, uh, that was the god of travelers who. Summer and I were kind of worshipping, but then kind of not because he did bad things. Like he, he like threw a dragon at us, and then, um, and then he played around with my hopes and dreams, and then he's now taken our sister. Don't forget, ransacked a close friend's body like a piece of meat. The guy sounds like a real dick. The biggest dick, not in a good way. Well, where is he um, taking her? Is he... Uh, Robert pulls out his spear uh, and just kind of looks around uh, best he can. <laughs> Show yourself! Summer! He's gone. He's gone. No, he can, he can teleport, Robert. Like, he can jump all over the world. 
Well, okay, so how, how, how do we... Uh, he puts his spear kind of on his back. Then how do we get to... How do we get to her? We probably need to teleport too. Um, <laughs> I know that the there's a king in the Feywild that could probably help us. You curry favor with the king. Then, fine. Then he should get us there. I don't know I, how to get there. I know I'm the odd one out here, but didn't you say back in the cave that you're trying to stay away from gods and things of that nature? They just don't seem to want to stay away from us. I hear that. Um... I need to think for a moment. And Salt so walks uh, away from the group. He can, he can think. What Zinir, can you? Uh. I don't think she can. Look <laughs> <laughs> how hard she throws. Oh, no. oh, oh, you're back. Uh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, you're back. Oh, everything. Oh, I think my internet went out. Oops. Sorry, guys. You're good. You're back now. The last thing you said was, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's directing this is a master of suspense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the timing! <laughs> um, I, I'm honestly um, surprised at how well Salt is handling this right now. Uh... I don't, I mean, last time we got to the Fade Wild because, was because of that asshole. Um, but the king of the Fade Wild does hate that asshole, so he would be our greatest ally. I just don't know how to get to him. I don't. Okay. How do we get to the Fade Wild? Where is it north, east, south? Where do we go? I think it's on a completely different plane of existence. Yep. Sounds about right. It doesn't make sense, no. But I saw him. Summer was real. Summer is real. He's real. So was in the Feywild. It, it's a little complicated. Robert, I want you to picture a house, okay? Imagine this house has a bunch of rooms in it. You see someone step out the door and Summer's standing in the hallway. If someone pulls Summer through a door... Summer might still be in the area, but you're going to have to cross through that door if you want to see Summer again. And this is a door that is very hard to get through. We're not just going to get her like that, like how he moves. Um, then take me. We will knock on this door and we will find her. Robert, this is the kind of door that you've got to find it first to knock on it. And this is one huge house. And once you get in that room, there might be a lot more than just Summer in there. I'm sorry. Robert just kind of turns for a little bit. Leaving Ren, Hao, and Zania alone as Salt walks off. Also, Robert kind of just turns and... He seems to look downward and uh, kick at his feet on the ground, just woofing away some of the dirt. He's deep in thought, though you're not sure what of. What's I'm everybody doing? just kind of sit on the ground where I am and take out um, Team's Locket um, amulet and start to fiddle with it, just like absentmindedly staring at it, flipping it in my hands, not really saying anything to these two strangers. You guys uh, kind of over here, Salt, seemingly having a conversation with himself. Um, you want to make them roll perception, Ryan? Uh, I'd say they're currently in the middle of a conversation, so I'm using their passive. Cool. Um, well, then you can decide how much they hear. Yeah. Um, no, no, yes, no. Okay, look, just go and harass your sister, okay? Fine. Um, and then you see Salt turn around and walk back to the group. 
<sighs> Alright guys, um, I think we need to figure out, first of all, how you, if you guys want to hang around with us, because Robert, Zania, we're probably going to have to somehow go and find somewhere again, because we need to. Um, we should also probably go back to town and see if we can take care of the bodies of our fallen friends. Um, and see if we can sort out what the heck's going on back in town as well. Yeah, yeah, that uh, sounds good. I would, I'll follow your lead, Salt. All right. Well, I guess I'd love you guys to come along. Just um, one question I'd then. Does this involve adventure? Everything we do is adventure. All no, right. Does this involve traveling? Well, we are chasing the god of travels, so we'll be traveling a lot. We have to find mm -hmm. find the door. And how much do you all love her? Very. She's immensely. blood. She's good enough for me. Precious. I'm in. What about you? Don't you have any one that might look after you? For me? Yeah. Ah, they'll be all right. They've got each other. Okay. I should probably go let them know before I do that, though. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Meet you at Ashburn, yeah? Uh, meet her. Travel with us. Um, that's, that's all right. I, I should go do this by myself, and then I'll be back. Travel safe. Before before he gets to say anything else, Featherfall and then diving off the second cliff. <laughs> Swan dive. Assassin's greeting back. <laughs> <laughs> As Robert looks down and sees uh, Ren kind of fall off down, Robert looks over to How and says, How, oh. <clears throat> a word, if you don't mind. Sure. Um... Before I join you. Uh, and I look to Zania. The keep mentioned something named Ada. Thought it might mean something to you. And then I go to Robert. Robert. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, um, she just gets... Forever Share is the team's amulet as my prop today. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so she eats it. <laughs> it melts in her hand. Huh. Um, she just holds it to her chest and yeah, how, how could I forget? I'm sorry. Um, thank you for reminding me. It's just been, um, a lot the past days. I don't know how long it's been anymore. Um, I would never forget about all this color, but thank you. Um, actually, and I relay exactly what it looks like, dimensions and all, if, um, you ever see this anywhere in Ashburn. Um, do you mind giving it to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that Kate. Oh, you know what? He sounds like Ren hit some rocks on the way down. <laughs> he forgot to feather fall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> some kitchen utensils at the bottom of the cliff. <laughs> oh, gee. If you I'll look for the color the best I can. Thank you. Yeah. Um, also, uh, I know you and your little friends and stuff. This is probably a lot. Um, and I'm not really good at sappy, sad stuff, but uh, you, you got this. And he gives like an awkward like punch on the arm. Uh, and then he walks away. Thanks. But like, okay, interesting. I'll take it. Uh, Robert stands by a nearby boulder on the edge of the cliff, maybe about 30 feet away from where the previous conversation was, hands just kind of on his hips, waiting as you come on over how he says, All right, I, uh, <clears throat> I think I know what you're, what you're speaking of now. I got more on it, and I think I know how to find her, or how to get to her with the solution. Um, uh, the God of Whispers has led me through many paths in life, and I've I've met someone who 
who can do this for us. And once we get back to Ashburn, we'll see if I can find that person. If, if we need to, I might need your help. Uh, obviously, you're the only other follower here in the group, and uh, I need some assistance in convincing to help. I can help however you need. Um, here. I'm going to reach into my bag and pull out uh, my small leather book that's just like stitched together pieces of other books and has writing all over it. And I flip to the back of my book of shadows uh, and I hand him an ink quill. Write your name. Oh. They can speak to you through your head, your friends, right? If I pray on it, sometimes. Uh, not. This lets me do this wherever you are. No matter the plane, no matter the time. Okay. Your name is in here. I can speak to you. So if something happens with this individual, and I trust your judgment, but just in case, and in case we open this door and it's not what we hope, we'll stay in touch. Okay. Um. He hands the uh, quill up. And scribbles a name on there. You can see scribbling very much like a kindergartner's. Uh, he doesn't have much use of the written word. Um, he's definitely read it and knows how to do it, but he just doesn't practice it very often. As he slams the uh, book shut. Yeah, wrote in there, Robert, in quotations. As he hands it back to you. Okay. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm, uh, so once he does that, I'm just going to do a test cast of basically sending on him and just say... Like, once you answer, 25 words. And that's all I sent right in front of him. Oh, um, okay. I have six done, seven, this, eight, before, nine, with, ten, Zinnia, eleven. So, write down your message, page, write the exact words, and just read what you write on the page, and don't. Read it aloud. Okay, I can do that. <clears throat> when you count the numbers, that takes up the words. Magic is finicky. Uh, I understand. Uh, I'll just read then. Um, but, okay. Um, just, I may need your help on this when we get to Ashburn. Yeah. Um. Talking about Ashburn, we should go, guys. You kind of hear... Uh, just whispers. You can't really get what they're going on, but some familiar words that Zania and Salt have heard before. Uh, Ashburn comes up uh, and Salt's like, speaking of, let's go. As Robert just kind of says, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> and walks back over to Zania and Salt on the clip uh, and says, after you all, go ahead, please. Do I still have time to switch out spells in my spell book? Uh, if you want to stop for like 30 minutes. Or what if I just want to do one? <laughs> then a small 30 minutes versus a oh. large... A 30 minutes made of feathers versus a 30 minutes made of steel, <laughs> you know. Mm. Why do I think it was mm. 10 minutes per spell? I don't know why. I, never mind. It's a bunch of feathers. <laughs> it's lighter. <laughs> yeah, it's just feathers. <laughs> There's so many. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. Mm. Uh, after uh, you all, okay. please. Who's heading down the cliff? Oh, well, didn't we get down the second cliff and we we're looking up at the top of the second cliff when um, Summer got taken? So we're right at the down top the of the second cliff, to my knowledge. Yes. Okay. How far is it well, to this cliff? I'll head down first. 50 feet down. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, easily able to run climb on down. down. Robert goes to hold, uh, like grab the <laughs> wrist of anybody who needs to go down and kind of help them down easily for Zinnia and how for whoever wants to go down first. Lydia, you seem like you could use a pick-me-up. Want to see something cool? Yes. How offers his hand? Robert Grabs pulls it. his back. Oh, okay. Don't worry, Robert. Um, Helping spirit. I run and I jump off the cliff with holding Zinnia's hand, and I cast Thunder Step, so we explode into whispers and appear on the ground. Zinnia, he begins what? to pull you off of the cliff, this stranger. I would probably try to stop first, like keep the heels like a cartoon in the in the dirt. Okay. And then 
as that happens, what? how you're trying to pull her off the cliff as you're like, come on, uh, as you're right on the edge, you <laughs> you jump. So how is falling? It's just whether you fall as well. So let's have you both do an opposed strength check. I'll say before, like, I'll say, like, it's just a leap of faith. She, okay, I'm going to do she's, a disadvantage because she wants it to happen, but she's also really scared. So. Okay. okay. That's sad. I have, a min- I, it's, I have a minus one, but it's still 17. Okay, yeah, mine was 11, so... Okay, uh, so you kind of pull to the edge as you're like, you do the wily Coyote like you fall anyway. <laughs> as Robert runs over to try and grab you, but you end up falling and suddenly this loud, thunderous noise, salt, it sounds like lightning hits the very top of the cliff where they're at before you suddenly see, you hear a loud, just hush, like a crowd just ran by you uh, before you look to the side and a puff of dust down at the bottom uh, as Howe and Zania are now at the very bottom. I didn't know that lightning could do that. That's crazy. Whoa! Pretty sweet. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't want to brag, but... We're good. I think disappearing in a puff of smoke is kind of lame. You got to make an entrance if you're going to make an entrance. And Hal starts walking forward with his hands in his pockets. Of course, Edge Lord walks to the south. Uh, <laughs> as Robert is going to... away and then realize I'm going the wrong way. And then I like skirt over <laughs> and I walk Oops, back to the okay. right way on the road. Uh, as... Robert, uh, in trying to make sure that you are okay, Robert hurries down the cliff, which you would not advise at all, uh, but Robert's pretty strong, and so he kind of just lets go from ledge to ledge as he kind of goes down. Uh, he makes it down without not much effort, or he does look on the ground and kind of looks you up and down and says, Okay then, uh, that's, that's good. Or uh, kind of hurriedly uh, jogging to catch up to Hal, uh, and says, Come on, let's find the door. Yep, we're looking for a door. I, I lean to salt. Is 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 metaphors like a thing I should just avoid? Like, is is this a simile kind of guy? Anecdote? Give me something. I'd avoid the meta twos and the meta threes, honestly. What? <laughs> you walk exactly conversations like this happen <laughs> for uh, a few <laughs> few miles of the five mile trek to the south uh, as essentially you're like what are you talking about and then right it kind of goes in this weird triangle as robert's like oh no what he means is metaphor uh he's numbers are different down under uh before how you're like ah oh, you do some down under innuendo and, and he's like what are you talking about? and salt kind of goes back and forth before zania corrects this happens uh for the next 30 minutes uh as you all essentially get to know each other through misunderstandings no, no, no. You, you don't go in the window you go in the door oh because right. metaphor is like the number no. oh no like the door that you talked about that's what he means I finally thought yeah, I caught so you go what in your de- you were saying. Your, in your door go. You don't go in your, in your window. As uh, Zania oh. sighs at the three of these people with uh, a, a combined intelligence lesser than she anticipated she would be walking with in the group. Salt rolls his eyes. <laughs> uh, as the four of you head further south through the forest, eventually you get to where you can see the edge and the outskirts of Ashburn, the white dwarvish stone of the garrison and the wall that surrounds it is bright compared to the dark trees and the green grass below. You can see some of the buildings in the distance, the tower up at the top, uh, or not the tower, the temple uh, that's up at the top of the cliff, uh, and you can see a lot of the bright green spots where the acid from Ithka that rained down sits still making its way through some of the architecture there. You can tell they haven't really found a way how to deal with that yet. Most things have stopped being burned, but in the distance, it's just this ominous green glow coming from the town itself. A big, outstretched line of essentially light, even though it is daytime out, maybe about 10 o'clock with a small breeze, not much clouds out, you can still see green uh, kind of reflecting off the other surfaces in the town. 
you're going down this kind of hill before you're going to get eventually below the level of the top of the wall and you won't be able to see anything. Uh, you know the small little area that you've gone into and out of before, the little kind of sewer-like grate, even though it's not a sewer that lets you in and out of the town very sneakily. However, there is a hole in the wall where the acid went before now, too, coming on the north side. What are the four of you trying to do? Well, at least something came good out of the acid. Saves us having to walk around to that door over there. So this is the thing you guys were talking about last night? Yeah. Giant dragon. Acid. Everywhere. Half a town. Jeez. Oh, for, oh first, the guild. We'll have to go find out. Okay. Like, I'm not a mind reader, honestly. Zania so, seems... Yeah. Uh, or... You changed, but not in a bad way at all, are you? I feel like I should ask if you're okay, but that seems like not the question to ask, because you are okay. I mean, are we okay? We've just been through... Catastrophic event. No, but you're taking it really well, like better than I am. Someone's gotta do it. I'm here for you, Zinia. Hug Salt. Thank you, Salt. Lead the way. Let's go. As the four of you walk, uh, Salt seeming to choose the path that has the destruction and the rubble. You go towards the northwestern side of the wall that's directly in the middle of the forest there. There's a small cliff that goes off that you could kind of like dump in the ocean and go in, but that's not really even on your mind. There's just this blown away portion of the wall there. A lot of the dirt that is kind of glowy seems to be soaking up the acid and slowly seeping it down. Once you get to this open wall space here, it's maybe about 40 feet wide. There's a lot of stone that looks like it's melted and is now much like metal being poured over a hard object. Uh, the actual stone itself is like hot magma that just kind of melted and then instantly solidified. Uh, it looks like a melted candle on the side. Some of the force of the blast also blew several of the stones flying off in the side. Uh, and there is a way that you could go in through there if you'd like. Uh, but again, the ground seems kind of mushy to walk through. What are we doing? Anyone there? I yell out in my loudest voice. In the distance, maybe about 100 yards or so, you can see two large windmills that seem to be on some of the farms nearby. There's not a lot of housing where you're directly at as you're on the north end of town. Uh, a lot of the wheat, a lot of the corn, etc. is grown around there. You'd have to be quite a lot louder if you want to get somebody's attention from this area. You're still on the outskirts of the town. Let's keep heading in. Okay. There is the hole in the ground with the mushy wall, the actual wall blocking your way. Where are you going? How are you getting there? I looked at everyone else. I mean, I can climb over it. What do you guys think? Do we go around? I'm, I'm not really opposed to you climbing over as long as we can get through safely. If you want to scout it out ahead and see if there's something safe. I can also take one person over and blink them to the other side, but um, it's up to you. How much do you weigh? Me? Yeah. He, like, looks down at himself. I don't know. <laughs> like, 160 soaking wet. Gotcha. Good to know. And I scurry up the wall. Zinnia, Howe, and Robert stand on the other side, kind of looking at each other. Let me see something neat. I use encode thoughts on myself and make like <laughs> another thought strand, but uh, instead uh, I put it in Zinnia's hand. Close your eyes and trust me. And then I do the same with Robert to also hold it. Um. Wasn't bad last time, alright, sure. 
The hands what looks should... like a very bright Twizzler. Um, while they both hold it, I just uh, channeled the th like the memory of me eating a pickle, so they just feel as if like the <laughs> sensation of eating a pickle. <laughs> uh, oh, what? The... This magic is so weird, huh? This is. I didn't not enjoy that. That was sour. Robert throws uh, your pickle thought on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we have time to sit down, I can also do that with your memories and stuff. We haven't time for anything right now. Robert heads over to the wall. This is a dire matter, Hal. He's gonna try and climb a bare garrison wall on his own. Um, as he says, this is a dire matter, Hal. This very much looks like someone trying to climb a stone wall with no aid. He gets some fingers under the little mortar bits, but he gets about a foot up before he just kind of slides down. So how's it going? <laughs> we'll go through the goop. So at the top, can I see um, a better pathway for everyone to take? Um, yeah, so from your vantage point, roll a perception for me. You die! Oh shit, that's a one. <laughs> <laughs> That is not a good way to wrap the Kickstarter, Alex. Come on. Oh. If absolutely fair dice, they'll roll you ones and twenties. Fair. Uh, as Salt looks down, uh, Robert <coughs> spits out just a puff of spit as he's like, oh, I want your pickle thought. Uh, some of the spit gets in your eye, Salt. Uh, and so you're oh. just kind of rubbing your eyes for just a little bit. Uh, Black Dragonborn. Yeah. Uh, spit very very acidic uh, not not good it feels like a lemon in your eye uh, as Robert says we'll go through the goop <laughs> Robert's gonna try and wade through the kind of the glowing goop. ground so I, I really can't see a better way to go <laughs> not right now <laughs> uh, are you gonna Robert be okay Robert does it burn oh god sticks one foot in and it's very much like heavy heavy mud after like a, a torrential downpour you can see him just kind of ugh. it slowly kind of sinks up uh, past his boots up to his knees before he kind of ugh. he pulls out the bottom of his spear and kind of pushes himself up, ugh, and wades over he doesn't seem to be having any sort of reaction to this it's just heavy mud for him as he walks through uh, oh, oh, thanks for taking the hit Robert I guess uh, it's okay I'll uh, and then I'll follow after him you can follow after Robert. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as you go to walk into the mud, I need a con saving throw. Oh, no. Okay, different dice. 13. 13. Nia, as you step into the muck, uh, you feel what almost could be described like the Pop Rocks kind of feeling in your mouth, but going up your leg. At first, it just kind of tingles. It's like your leg is going asleep almost instantaneously before that kind of feeling you you start to immediately sniff and smell like burnt hair that's kind of left over a candle as you look down uh, and you can tell it's your fur currently being singed by the acid and you move your leg back uh quickly but enough damage was done you take three points of acid damage ah uh, uh, uh. Robert, what are you made of? Ah. He looks back, seeing you doing it too. He's like, no, you said you could, he pointing to how, you said you could get somebody through. Why didn't you take her? I'm, I like Dragonborn. I honestly didn't think she was just going to follow. Anyway, do you want to take another jump? Looks like her foot probably, that, her foot's probably skinnier than the rest of her body because her fur is <laughs> gone. <laughs> Suddenly you look like one of those, uh, very naked varieties of cats that have no fur, just from like a, a few inches above your ankle. Uh, it's very, very thin there. She looks down at it. Yeah, so let's take a jump. Before we do, Hal reaches into his bag and he pulls out like a little tensor bandage and like wraps it around. And it's then he skinnier. offers his hand out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Takes hand. And then on the other side, you, again, a loud thunder-like clap. Salt, this is not your forte at all. You're very much like, okay, well, if there was danger, now they know. You 
see your two friends come off to the other side. Again, it sounds like a loud crowd, like, yeah, just roaring in the middle of a field. Uh, before you look over to the side, finally spit out of your eyes, you see Howe and Zania on the other side, uh, nearer towards the farm, and Robert picking his way up and over the last bit of this kind of very, very acidic soil. You can see him kind of brush it off best he can with his hand, not really affected by it in any real way before he kind of stands up and uh, brushes it off his spear and puts it back on his back. Can I react to that? Absolutely. So I see that happen and I go, huh, interesting. And then go and slam my foot on the ground. And then I disappear in a bunch of sparks and appear next to um, Zania and co. Do you make a similar oh. sound? Yep, exactly the same. Um, as close as possible. That was an experience? Oh, you suddenly see the small <sighs> rattling kind of with the same loud thunderous clap and a roar of a crowd as if a gladiator just slew their fiercest opponent. <sighs> as salt lands and kind of does the same thing, patting his own little leg off there. I wrote a 17 as well, right? Not for, for a knuckle bump. Uh, sure. Put them. Zinnia will purposely stand there, just open mouth that salt just... Told you, make an entrance, and oh. I pat Zinnia on the cheek and walk through the town with hands in pocket <laughs> again. But I go again in the wrong way, and then I stumble back to the right way. Uh, as y'all are now in the town, able to kind of look forward, I need everybody to roll me a perception check. <laughs> hey. This is golf rules for perception, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Double bogey. <laughs> What'd you 16. get? 16 from Saul. Ooh, look at you. How? Five. Zania? With a plus three. <laughs> 16. 16. Oh, actually, Zania and Salt are first to recognize as Robert's patting the rest of him off. How is uh, coming back from the wrong direction, <laughs> almost immediately heading back out the way that y'all just came. Uh, you two look over and you see a rider with a Huge draft horse heading your way with a very, very large, what looks like glaive or spear in the distance, charging extremely quickly in your direction. There are some uh, distance spear. off there on the other side currently of the uh, farm, maybe about 200 yards away, but they are rushing with mighty speed. To so you get out spear and point. Yeah. And you we don't recognize, you know. No, I yell out spear and point. Oh, okay, Obviously, gotcha, gotcha. Robert and Howe now aware of what's coming toward you. Yeah, Zinnia, they have weapon like out and up at the ready on top of this thing. They look to be quite large from the distance. I will also get my spear out and then just like ready. Defensively. I'm going to stand behind Zinnia. <laughs> Robert pulls his spear and shield out and puts it over on the top of it. Um, Salt and Zania, roll me a history check. Oh no, that's not her strong suit. Uh, Cast guidance. Fourteen on Zania. Thank you thank you. You don't like, know that they're doing crazy. this, as this is just them. Oh, okay. Possibly remembering something. I will cast it after then. So on her next <laughs> check, then. <laughs> of course, of course. Salt, Zania. Fourteen. Fourteen plus two. Okay, sounds good. Uh, as all of you kind of prepare yourself for whatever this is charging closer that you don't recognize, as it gets closer, you recognize a female on the back of this horse, very, very large, with a huge glaive charging towards you. But as they get closer, maybe about 50 yards away, you don't see any legs on this female on top of this horse. That's, she's not on top of a horse. That's There's a centaur currently charging you with a huge glaive with a very, very mean look on her face. Whoa, 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 we mean no harm. As loud as I... Yells out, whoa, we, we mean no harm. Uh, as the spear kind of leans forward as she's kind of charging very, very quickly towards you now before she kind of stops the horse uh, well, horse body uh, as best as it would as kind of stops maybe about 30 yards away 
as the front legs rear up. She holds the glaives, looks down at all of you and says, Who brought you here? Where have you come from? Do you not see? It is not the time to be entering this town. Be gone with you. That's three very good questions. I do see. Um, we came from, that's a long story, but let's just say we came from the Scorch. And who brought us here? Uh, I guess the Red Wagon in, and then I flash my pin. She looks down at your pin. She kind of pulls uh, aside her little shoulder strap here on her arm. And you can see a small bronze pin, just like what you have. Or she shoves it back over, looks down and says, You've come at a bad time. The town was recently besieged by a dragon. We were here when it happened. We know we lost a couple of friends, at least. We're here to try to find them, or at least their bodies. All of the bodies have been accounted for in the center of town. Best come with us, then. Kind of turns her head. Uh, as you see her, she's got this long kind of ponytail that goes all the way back. Very centaur-like. It's all hair pulled straight back to a very, very long ponytail that seems to almost go down like her mane would past where her horse-like body is. She is built like a brick shit house. Uh, she is absolutely jacked. Uh, so is the horse. Again, this is a draft horse or a warlike horse rather than it is a pony esque centaur. Um, very, very large uh, as she kind of turns, holding her spear uh, aloft uh, on her shoulder, saying, Best come with us then. She kind of tries to lead you all over towards the center of town. Sunia looks respectfully. Al also looks respectfully <laughs> over his shoulder, like looks over his mask, is doing that face. We, we both look at each other a little bit like, uh. Meanwhile, Rin's in the woods and just tripped over a stick. God, son of a bitch. <laughs> God, come on. Um, right, uh, so... Sorry, the Ren image, um, or you just like, oh, ah. <laughs> On the way there, I'd want to at least introduce myself so we're at, on a first name basis with um, Strong Centaur Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so hi, I'm. Yourself. Uh, thank you for not attacking us. Um, I'm Zania. Um, and. Uh, sorry, I'm still in shock um, from what happened here. We lost uh, really close friends. Um, I don't know if the rest of the group wants to introduce themselves, but I wanted you to know my name um, only for reasons to get to know each other on a first name basis, not in any awkward way. Okay, never mind. Bye. How from over like a corner is going like... <laughs> <laughs> the toothless meme. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she kind of looks at you and nods. I'm Eldani. You were fortunate then if... You all came out alive. There's others who did not. There's a party that headed to the north. Not terribly unlike your own, but different, that caused quite a lot of chaos here in the town. Where two rat folk, uh, Dragonborn, a man, uh, a Leonin. Uh, what did they do? Supposedly, rumor goes about town that the dragon attack is they're doing have you seen them you came from the north right did we come from the north you oh did. we did time to get out of there <laughs> <laughs> you did come from the north oh shoot uh is near realizing that she looks exactly the same <laughs> as when she left i put uh, my hand on Zinnia's hip i guess the right sort of height and I sort of take a step forward, so I'm semi-positioned in front of Zinnia and the centaur. I go, yeah, that's actually us. Um, we took quite a few casualties. As you can tell, we haven't got um, part of the party you mentioned. Um, we're coming back to try to see what we can do to fix what's She's going on. Immediately, her feet stop. Uh, hooves, I guess, is the best way to describe it. They just kind of stop as she turns and says, So... This was your fault, then you said that you're trying to fix what you did. 
This not is directly. Points I mean, to the glaive. is the holes in the ground where you run your fault. Um, events happen around us. Uh, we were there. We tried to stop the dragon, um, and we think we succeeded because the dragon's no longer there. But you know, you can believe what you want. I'm here to try to fix this issue. Whatever. I make no judgments one way or another, but you do need to get to the center of town very quickly. They are debating on whether they're putting a quest notice out for all of you. That's our idea. And I suggest we move a little faster. Or she's Is Ryan going robotic for anyone else? No, it's just yep. Rainbow. It's me? Me. Oh. Yeah. E Oh no, I took my camera out. Not my mic. Became a robot ah, beep, boop, boop, for a few boop, seconds. Beep, beep, boop. Beep, 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 beep. Ooh, multicam, look at that. Oh. That wasn't on purpose, but beep, 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 am I good? Boop, boop, boop. My robo? Oh, huh? oh. No. Okay. Yes. Hello. You are still a robot. Uh. <laughs> Drew. <laughs> Not helping Drew. Oh. Now we can't hear you at all. Yeah. I wasn't actually <laughs> saying anything. I just... just... <laughs> ah. Okay, you sound great. Okay, you sound cool. wonderful. Good. Uh, um, at, as usual. <laughs> before we walk fully away, um, I'm going to sit and take my book and just like kind of put like my finger out. I'll catch up. Um, I'm going to cast Unseen Servant as a ritual with my book. Um... And I'm going to give them the command to go find the caller that uh, Zania described. So that while we're doing stuff, there's a little invisible person running around rooting for that. Okay. Unseen Servant ritual takes 10 minutes, correct? Yep. So that's yeah. why I said I'll catch up with them. Unless someone wants to carry me while I cast a ritual. <laughs> that's a big centaur here. Yeah. Yeah. lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Salt, uh, Zania, Robert kind of looks over to you and then kind of... Uh, quickens his pace to a jog uh, as he trying to speak to the centaur woman says perhaps you could sh shed a little light w what's the extent of the devastation uh, as he's heading at a jog to catch up to her you can tell she wants to go faster as she is half horse and that would be very easy for her um, but Robert's jog is essentially a quick walk for her with her horse like body Salt Zania what are you two doing trying to keep up with him okay yeah. he again what's the extent of the damage she says well when i describe a pile of bodies that's a pretty descriptive if you take descriptors that way it's not good it could be worse but it's not good it happened at night and so many people were home otherwise the acid would have gone straight through the town square and caused far more damage so We'll count it lucky, best we can. But night isn't even the good descriptor. This it was still dark from the morning. People weren't out yet. So good. Um, what have you heard of the locksmith? Um, I don't slip or yeah, slip, slip. He, I don't know. I'm not on good terms with him. I only come in every now and again. Okay, well then, we should hurry. We're looking over to Zinnia Salt. Hurry? Yes, yes. Hurry. Yes. As soon as she hears Slip's name, she is already catching up even As faster. You all are heading at a very, very quick pace, uh, heading to go to where Eldani is taking the rest of the group. So... In this kind of path, it's easiest to go directly following this line of acid that went down. Eldani essentially stays right next to it the whole time, going forward towards the center of town. It doesn't take too long. This isn't a huge town. It takes maybe about four minutes to get to where you're trying to go, uh, which is right near the town center there. The town center itself is this large market stall-like area, since this is a small town. A lot of trade was done here just between the people who live there. And now there's a big old acid scar down the center of it. Everybody seems to be on the western side of this line and this scar here within the map. They're more on the side that appears to have stone and dwarvish architecture than the other side that seems to be more human and elvish in nature, very woodish. 
there's a lot of commotion, a lot of talking between each other, but as you get closer, what looked like a hill that you were still to crest is actually a pile. A pile of what Eldani described, bodies laying in a large mass. Based purely on experience in battle, you'd have to guess the numbers here are at least in the triple digits. This is not a large town to begin with, and so this is going to be a huge, huge blow to them. Uh, there's a large crowd kind of gathered around the base of that. Uh, there's several, several uh, people crying that's kind of drowning a lot of this out, but it sounds almost like you imagine like the stock market where there's just lots of voices, very loud people yelling back and forth, but they're all circled around a single point there. Um, as all of you are walking up uh, and trying to get there very quickly, eventually some people turn as Eldani, being that she's so big, is able to easily kind of push past people and people move out of the way once they hear hor horse hooves coming forward. Uh, but when they do so, they see Zania and Salt, and some of them are like, you start hearing, it's, the, it's them. They're, 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 why did they come back? It, they, you hear other people like, my boy, uh, my little girl. You hear lots of voices between all of them. Some accusatory, some scared of you all as you're kind of pushing into the crowd here. Robert looks around and says, Um, what should we do here? Who's in charge at the moment? Uh, currently, you're right in the middle <laughs> of the crowd. Eldani doesn't seem to have much sway in the town to be able to just, like call attention to anything, especially since you've never heard of her before. Um, so she's just now joined the crowd with the rest, trying to get her turn with whoever is up front, but you can't see, especially with Salt, with your stature, where you're currently at. What are we doing? Zania, can you um, prop me up on your shoulders? Of course. And Zania was already looking to Salt to uh, answer what to do anyway, so what's up? One shoulder? Like a kid on the back? How would you like it? How would you want it? Whatever's salt? more comfortable. Put you right. Right here is fine. As Salt, you stand two feet on her right shoulder and just one arm on her head to gain a little bit more balance. Zinnia is a tall person, so now you stand quite tall above the crowd. As Zinnia holds you up to do that, a kind of gasp comes from the crowd. <gasps> it kind of spreads itself out and throughout uh, as several people see the rat folk that they were uh, concerned with now hoisted up like Simba uh, aloft for people to see. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, as uh, kind of quiet slowly murmurs over the town, you hear whispering between all of them, but it's very, very low, very died down. Salt, roll me a perception check. Those are the ones I'm bad at. Not with this dice. 18 plus 1 is 19. 19. The center of this gathering of crowds, below where the bodies are, you see Savage kind of trying to push back a, a few people to see who he can see there. You see mm. several other guards that are around him trying to keep the people away from the bodies currently, uh, but Savage is kind of pushing back and you see him looking over, uh, trying to get his view of you. Um, or he... Savage! Savage! Your voice carries easily over the crowd as everyone is very, very quiet, apparently. You see, everybody make way, make way. People kind of move back. Someone steps in front of Savage. Roll one more perception for me, Salt. Mm. Another 18! That's 19. <laughs> you don't hear much, but you hear a few words that sound very threatening. Uh, it, it's very mumbling, uh, but it's it's very don't you dare, don't, yada yada, aimed at Savage before he just kind of pushes back the man that steps in front of him. Uh, but this man stands there very resolute, very strong before one of the other guards kind of has to pull him away out of Savage's direct path. Several people kind I, of move and back up, allowing Savage a pathway over towards you. I can tell that like the crowd's kind of really um, throwing their anger towards us, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. I'm going to sort of note uh, gesture to Zania, I guess like a pat on the head or something to just get her to stop for a second. Stop. Um, I, here goes. And I turn around to face the whole crowd. And 
I go, people of Asterion, we have all suffered, and I am sorry this has happened. We are here to do our best to make sure this doesn't happen again. We've all lost friends and family. The god behind all of this has taken my twin sister, which is why you can't see her here, and he has killed two of our party members. We all have gone through hell, and we all want this to be fixed. You hear an immediate reply from someone far in the crowd, we've gone through hell because of you, as you hear a lot of people, yeah, kind of charging uh, and yelling back at you. I let them yell, and I just continue talking. Mm -hmm. As you talk, uh, you... people yep. kind of silence to listen to you. But... You can throw anger wherever you want, and if that makes you feel better, then great. But we are here to try to fix this. Anger is better used when you try to fix things. So hopefully you can all join us. And I don't, I don't even wait for a response. I turn back around and sort of nod to Zania to keep walking. As in to leave? No, to keep walking towards Savage. Okay, sounds good. Uh, as you kind of nod to her to keep walking, Eldani looks at you with a roll a performance check, Salt. That's something I am good at. That is only an 11, but plus 5 is 16. <laughs> so it starts juggling to make his point a little bit better. <laughs> oh, look! An eye! So oh! <laughs> Ooh. Uh, as you go to walk forward, you're met with legs that stand strong like a tree trunk that don't really move or allow you to move forward. As you're trying to head towards Savage Zinnia, with your passive perception, you notice the crowd is kind of gathered and circled around you all now, kind of cutting off the direction that you all just came in and from before a hand meets the side of the man who's kind of blocking your view here and pulls him back as Savage moves beside them and pushes them off and says, we will hear everything that they have to say to us. We will hear it all. Because I do not believe that they have malicious intent in their heart. This... This is a, a bad situation I find myself in. Salt, Zania, uh, Robert, uh, Aldani. You know them? She kind of looks back and says, No. I'm just waiting on judgment. Figure out what I'm supposed to do here. All right. I give you my word, Salt, and everyone here, that whatever we figure out will be with due justice, and we will figure out how to get this town whole. We've all gone through a tragedy here, and it's not all right, and I'm sorry that we all had to go through this. This town's been through enough for a long time now. You dwarvish folk and elves know more than the humans do. I just we need to talk about this. Can everybody give me some time to speak with the group, with the city council, and put them under a proper trial? The crowd itself kind of looks around. There's several people that you hear kind of cries of anger out, uh, but a lot of the these families kind of uh, stifling each other. So they didn't really get moved by your presence. However, this is a man that they know and trust within the town, the town guard who's kept them safe, and he kind of garners a bit more respect in the town, I guess is the best way to describe it. And so there are many people very angry. You can hear huffs. Uh, several people immediately start walking away from this small crowd here. But it's kind of a huff in, uh, okay, fine, Others just kind of, the crowd eventually kind of disperses away. Not many people leaving the area here. But currently moving away from your position. I sort of uh, bend down to Zania and kind of whisper in her ear. So I guess uh, this time we don't run away from it, eh? I'm so, so proud of you, Salt. Uh, you're telling the truth right away. That was amazing. Yeah. That's what we gotta do, right? Yeah, you definitely do. This is... Oh, this... I thought... 
thought I could do a lot to help you here, but the town wants someone to blame for this. Obviously, the dragon is the one to blame. Obviously, that no, no, no. Drow fella is the one to blame, but they need... Why were they here is what they need someone to throw their anger and their grief at. Do we have a place we can sit down and talk through everything we know? Yeah, we can... We can go to the Ashburn Castle and speak there. That's where the council usually meets. I haven't seen some of the members lately, though. Carlene's up, so we can speak with her. But I haven't seen Tonar. Have you seen him when he came in? Well, no. we may have to do it without him. I haven't seen his body either, so that's a good sign. But... Savage kind of looks... Sorry, like... just to totally out of character. Yeah. Didn't he get teleported away? Tonar? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That Dane was did. Dane did. That was Dane. Okay, never mind. Savage kind of looks over uh, as he sees Robert. He says, oh, Dane ain't here either, but Robert goes uh, in front of the pile and just kind of falls to his knees and just kind of... You can see him kind of put his head down in his hands before you start to hear a weeping sounds as he just pulls out his spear and lays it down in front of him before he just bows his head and taps his forehead to the ground seeming to pray in peace oh, but if we don't have him we'll deal with who we have uh, let's let's go to the castle Eldani uh, do you mind giving us a bit of privacy from here Eldani just kind of turns uh, like somebody rearing a horse to the side. Uh, it has to kind of do an arc rather than just like a backwards movement. Uh, but turns and leaves the group heading back uh, towards the south. Let's talk in the garden. Savage nods his head. He doesn't seem to wait for Robert uh, as Robert wasn't a part of this. So he's not sure if he is going to follow or not. Uh, but Savage seems to walk uh, towards the east where there is a small keep not necessarily castle i wouldn't say it's big enough to be called that but this is a very old stone keep that's been here for what you can tell to be quite a long time as we're walking ryan can yep. i um hey Zania, um can you send one of those messages to our masked friend letting him know we're not in the center of town anymore letting him know what sorry say that i let him know what what Letting him know we're not in the center of town anymore. We're at the castle. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Yeah. And okay. just gonna do it. I guess I'm That's still fair. on your shoulders, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're I'm doing that, down. Ryan. Yeah. Uh, I sent you a text. Okay. Sounds good. So, uh, Zinnia and Salt, you begin to follow. While that's happening, back to how. How you eventually complete your ritual. You close the book, and with the slam of it, the dust flies out. And the dust seems to barely coat, very much like the Invisible Man, where like a bit of powder touches the edge of the Invisible Man. You can see the outline now of your servant. What form does this dust coating this invisible being take? Um, It looks like similar to, to like how in very like a lithe form um but it's something that's constantly like like changing like you could almost see like a jawline that shapes into like more pointed form they become more stout like it's someone who's just shifting like every whisper that passes through it it becomes that person um and it's just this dissonant creature of different like shapes and and uh forms um once the creature appears and everyone starts when they were in the area everyone starts whispering um, I think Hal realizes everyone's whispering and like in that like drops on the ground and holds his head um, before giving his thing the instructions and just starts like screaming by himself because the full crowd of morning people whispering with combination of chatter is so close that it's just like overstimulation um, and he curls into a ball and just starts um, like whispering to himself um, but then after a bit he gets up describes the necklace and sends the unseen servant off uh, and then I think he gets the message uh, to go to the keep 
as you kind of curl up next to a tree, the form of this thing, the dust eventually kind of flies off of it, making it completely invisible. And you can see a bit of the blades of grass kind of move as it stomps its feet and moves off, trying its best to find the collar in what is the remnants and remains of the Red Wagon Inn. Uh, eventually, you kind of compose yourself. Uh, Zania, are you using sending to send him something? Yes. Okay, what are you saying? Um, <clears> hey, <throat> you, how? We are going to the Ashburn Castle. Meet us there. That's it. Yeah. Don't need to add anything else to it. Eventually, how these whispers, very, very loud are deafened by the sound of true magic hitting your ears outside of your normal magic as you hear very clearly we're heading to the castle meet us there or it just kind of suddenly this one singular thought covers over your mind before you all right kind of snaps you out of it as you look to the north there's uh, the <clears throat> silhouette of a castle hiding behind the sun to the east as you pat yourself off and head over towards the eastern side your servant doing your bidding while you're in that direction I just send back on my way uh, and, and then I'm going to head over as you're heading over you just hear in the distance hey hey who hey who um, oh shit sorry how hey hey <sighs> I, I loudly sigh and then turn around and look over my shoulder you see Ren like holding his foot as if he stepped on a large rock, kind of hurting his toe there. So he's like, ah, wait, uh, wait. It's, it's, it's far from the forest here. Yeah. Whew. Where, uh, where are the rest of them? They're going to Ashburn Keep. Um, I think there are not direct trouble. But, you know, oh. something's not great. Well, cheer up, Buttercup. Let's go. I, and Buttercup. the wren starts, like, going off and not knowing where they're going. I do that thing where I finally go on the right path and grab him on the right one. <laughs> Both of you split um, off in, like, a V-like shape before how, seeming to always kind of catch himself, you run up to catch him and then... You go in the straight direction that you're supposed to go. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, um, this is weird, Ren. Um, but I'm gonna be upfront with you. Can you use magic? Um, yeah. And Ren's gonna look down at the ground and just point at a rock, and the rock, like, levitates up into his hand. Yeah. Good. I think, um,. I can do all sorts of magic. Pew pew! Little fire bolts off into the sky. <laughs> all right, that's enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> sitting there, like, while Ren's doing different spells, <laughs> sitting there, like, um, I think this, our friends we're working with, they are, they're encountering people who I don't think of, have as much experience with magic, but magic might make them understand. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of, sort of. No, not at all. What? Um, we have two souls. Just, <laughs> just trust me. Okay. Um, we might have to use some magic to explain some things. I got you. Whatever you need, just let me know. Thanks, Ren. It's also, I'm sorry way, right? about the chowder. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Um, and Rin's going to slip up for a moment and say, that's fine, I can always make some more. And then continue on. <laughs> His mask was originally like a look of concern. A huge grin creeps across it. It's very much your from actual behind. art now. <laughs> yeah, he, and from behind the mask, he just whispers, caught you. And he keeps walking forward. How? I need you to roll me a history check. 19 plus, I think only plus one, but still it's a 19 base. 
Uh, what is my history? Yeah, it's just plus one. So that's an unnatural 20. A nat 20. If you're having the thought that I'm thinking you're having, mm -hmm. this in Asterion is the equivalent of finding a unicorn, right? Those beings that you might be thinking of have eluded many of people. They're mostly legend, but if you know the right people to talk to, you know they exist, but finding one was essentially impossible because of what they do. Mm -hmm. You also have heard other rumors of those beings. Uh, I'm having to say those beings so that uh, mm -hmm. it's not just directly told to chat as this is Howe's knowledge. Uh, and I can't do like a <laughs> whisper to you like, oh, come here real quick. Uh, <laughs> those beings are often hunted by those with nefarious intentions for their blood as like a unicorn very rare very valuable or so you've heard your blood is safe with me <laughs> how does not say that though okay i was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> it looks but to have a different conversation shoulder. don't worry i got your blood bro <laughs> <laughs> no but uh, runs away <laughs> <laughs> I just keeps uh, walking um with like a little bit more of a skip in his step um, literally yeah. both of you were skipping now then <laughs> yeah okay cool. we're, we're happy we have no issues true <laughs> you don't I even feel like know Reddit's that they're you know. I was doing that thing with his hands are in his pocket if Ren turns around he stops skipping but then he keeps like doing like a little bit of a skip and then every time <laughs> Ren turns it's just like he's doing a slow walk and he does that whole like what but <laughs> skipping <laughs> <laughs> as soon as Ren turns away, how does that little hop where the two legs like click in the air as <laughs> he follows right behind? Uh, to Salt, Zania, and Savage. He's walking you over towards the castle, uh, which I guess not walking you, Salt, as you're hopping a ride currently. Uh, as Savage is walking you over to the castle, he says, We were planning to meet over here, members of the council that still are... And so, they should already be there. Um, look, I can't say it looks good on your behalf. This, The rumors are saying that he, you brought him here intentionally, that you didn't know he was coming, but it still caused it anyway. I, explain You're him will definitely need to be done. You're not rely on rumors, which is why we're going to be talking. Exactly. I don't, I don't have any stock in it, but... Also, a smart enough man to know when somebody's lying to me, so it's good that you do. And you also know we're here right now, which I think speaks for itself. It does. Honest folk can always right or wrong. As you, you get to wrong. the gate of this castle here, it is a very large, old oaken door. It doesn't have any lock on it, though it appears to have a hole where a lock might have used to have been. Uh, as he pushes this door open, there's a garden here with several different varieties of flowers, tons of seating around here, uh, stone benches. This is the kind of uh, foyer of the castle before you'd actually be inside it. You're just inside the walls of this thing. It's only maybe 100 feet by 100 feet square, the entire thing from the outside. So it's not a large foyer, but it's still a castle, and that's very, very, very large for back then, right? Um, so as you're walking through here, you notice there are uh, a few people sitting down on the stone already that are appearing to meet uh, or expecting to be met. Um, there's one man who's... You've seen him before playing music up on the stage. Uh, he kind of has that drifter-like suit with kind of the patchwork holes uh, and the, like top hat, not terribly unlike what Summer has, that's kind of uh, just holed as he's got a cigar that he's kind of looking down and stamping out as he looks over at you all, so he takes a big puff and kind of sets it out on the ground before he stands up and bows to Savage coming inside. You also recognize Carlene sitting on one of the stone benches there as she as a huge, like a pitcher of water that she's been drinking onto the side before she <clears throat> sets it down and stands up as well. It says, you, uh, seen Tonar? Is he coming? Salt, Zania. Um, all right. What are you? Oh, you're right, Hannah. Yeah, um, 
Doing fine. Um, I jumped down off in the air now. Where's... She looks almost, like, a bit scared. Where, Where's uh, the blonde fella? I, um, I walk up to her and sort of... She's sitting down, right? Uh, she's standing now. She's standing, okay. Well, I look up to her as much as I can, eye to eye, and sort of say, we've all suffered losses today. Roll an insight, Zania, and salt. Thirteen. Oh, what is this? Ten. Ten. She just kind of looks a little distraught uh, and sad for you all. Uh, she sits back down on her stone chairs. Savage has walked over to the side where he's grabbed two wooden chairs that he's kind of bringing to the center of the circle here. There's a small circle of these stone chairs. There appears to be six of these stone ones around this circle, almost like a ceremonial type circle in the center of this garden here. Uh, all of them kind of backing up to a couple different types of plants there. Savage sits at the one that's closest towards the gate to the actual castle or keep there that's on the inside rather than the outside. Um, Carlene sits next to this drifter-like fellow who sit onto the other side as there's four other empty seats here uh, within, or three other empty seats here uh, within the actual foyer. But he sets the wooden chairs down and says, uh, you, go ahead, sit, let's let's talk. And he's going over to close the actual like walk or doorway into the foyer. Uh, when he does so, he's met with a hand that kind of stops it from closing. Uh, as Ren, uh, you are walking over to the castle and you see it closing. You're like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> see <you. laughs> Wait, hey. Come on. Hi, friends. Is he? Uh, hey. Uh, sorry, with us. Wood Elf. This is. Wait. Oh. Sorry, this is a bit of a closed questioning. We're not entirely sure what they've done here, and even if they are with you, Salt, uh... <laughs> Rin <laughs> cups his hands and uses a uh, message to get to uh, Zania. You want us You want us in there? You, you want us to come in? <laughs> it's Ren. Uh, yes. I think... You heard it here. She wants us in. Actually, I heard it here, but she wants she wants us here in. As you, no mm -hmm. other voice comes out, but you. But <laughs> Zania hears it because apparently your way of communicating messages to look like you're shouting for this very subtle like. Ooh, I want to be very quiet. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Spell iconic. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, Zinnia, you hear, yeah, as you say, yeah, um, so he's like, they want us in. Tavaj looks back over to Zinnia and Salt for, Salt, you said, let him in. Oh, I said they're with us. Oh, they're yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, if you'd, if you'd rather just talk to Zinnia and I, can you give them a spot they can sit down and wait for us? Sure. There's nothing they, here that they we are won't part be of the story, to... though. So, if you want more collaboration, especially to the end of everything that's happened, they're going to be able to assist us with that. You can roll persuasion on that. <laughs> Rin's like not me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a six plus two is an only an eight. An eight. Uh, as salt's like they're a uh, they're, they're they're part of the equation. <laughs> yeah. In, in his delivery. But they are. I mean, they were there when yeah. when Astagon got uh, took some up. But I'm not. It's not. Not me trying to lie or anything. Yeah, that's why persuasion, not deception. Yeah, cool. Fine. You all can sit in, but just stay out of the circle. This is all stuff that's going to be public knowledge when we're done here, anyway. There's a few chairs that are just kind of here in the garden, but they're not in the center of this like circle that seems to be surrounding Salt and Zinnia currently. Do y'all have any tea? I, th I think there's some inside. How you want to go get some tea? 
Hell yeah. Let's go. Before I go for tea fully, though, I go, can you grab us in like an hour after I have rested shortly? Mm. Uh, yeah, um, this is, I don't think it'll last that long, so. Um, it's just if they're doing a big chat thing, I can, I can help clarify things. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay, peace. <laughs> and I start <laughs> wandering to find a kitchen. As, uh, Ren, you and Hao head on into the castle, which we'll pause on that for just a minute. Um, Salt, Zania, there are two wooden chairs in the center of this circle. They offer them to you as Savage regains his spot at what is kind of the head of it. I sit down and then reach my hand out, offering it to Zania if she wants to hold it. You take it. Both of you kind of sit there in solidarity, holding hands. As Savage says, all right... Everybody else isn't really accounted for, but there's an odd number of us here, so we can hold court with a majority decision, at least. Let's, let's talk about what happened on that night. Carlene, you were there. Whistler, you saw it too, but at much a distance. I was on the eastern gate, so all I saw was the aftermath. Explain your story. I just want to see what adds up first without we doing any questions yet I sort of squeeze in his hand a little bit looking to her and saying do you want to do it or shall I I think you're the most capable right now okay I um I look back to everyone and I, I start with um well to explain last night we need to explain a few days before can I start there otherwise yeah. you may ask us questions that will go back to a few days before that's fine. And then in probably the least rushed ever saltificational conversation, Salt explains any part that is pertinent to Castagon. So everything from um, him appearing at the other Red Wagon Inn to teleporting us to the Feywild to um, insults coming from Gideon um, to us getting teleported around till finally Castagon trying to prove how good he how powerful he is by summoning Ithaca um, to um, team and salt facing Ithaca face to face one on one. Um, pretty much everything that is pertinent to this, there's nothing to be hidden um, that I can think of and explain the whole story in a very calm, cool, and collected voice. You're interrupted several times by Savat. Wait, wait. You mean you, as then you correct him? Uh, during the course of this entire kind of deluge of information probably takes about 20 minutes or so to tell it properly. Um, if not more for general saltisms, but uh, in a more calm sense, I'm su assuming this isn't the eight hour stories that salt typically tells. No. Okay. Uh, Carlene has not only filled her pitcher up again, but has filled it twice entire large pitchers as she's been drinking this water here, drinking it as if somebody who's, had an intense thirst coming just straight out of the scorch almost uh, like you all have done before. She just kind of keeps, <sighs> she's listening heavily, but she's very involved uh, in this drink here. Um, several times the other man there uh, lights up a new cigar or takes one that's kind of a bud off the ground. He kind of swaps between them, almost like looking, sets another one down. Uh, How and Ren, you two are currently going into the house. So while this story is happening, How and Ren, you open the door to find a very, very large entryway into this keep. This looks to be like someone's home. If you've ever been in royalty or nobility or a lord's keep before, there's several portraits all across this uh, with plaques under them saying their name that seem to go a long way back. Uh, many of them having the last name Ashburn uh, on them. There is one that has a plaque uh, that seems to be ripped off, uh, what is kind of the last one in the line of these plaques here. You're not sure what happened there, but there's definitely room for more, expecting that this keep would have lasted for many more generations. Uh, there's a few different pathways down here. 
Um, but you also see um, to the right what in the distance looks like to be what might have been servants' quarters before, but are definitely the kitchen and whatnot, uh, versus what are like the bedrooms off to the left. Are you just heading right to the kitchens or? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ren heads on over, how following. Uh, in the hallway that you go down here, uh, there's several other faces, uh, portraits made uh, of a couple different important figures in this town, I guess is the best way to describe it. Uh, there's one named uh, Mary, uh, one named Henrik. Uh, there's a couple pictures of animals that are here on the wall, uh, several of them looking to be old adventurers that been painted uh, were important figures at one time on this town before you get over to what is the kitchen here there's nobody in here this isn't like filled with servants this appears to be almost like a community like center now where this might have once belonged to a family but there are several pots to where you could begin making and brewing your own tea if you'd like or if you'd like to search the kitchen for any other types of uh, imbibements you absolutely could how I thought I had to sneeze it was going to be, whew, I was going to be a rough one. Ah, tea. Tea. <laughs> uh, as pretty quick, uh, there's lots of tea leaves and tea chunks uh, easy to find around here. You take a teapot, put it up to the fire, begin brewing some tea. During this time is the point to just grab tea and then head back out so that you can listen. Um, or trying to give them time to do their own conversation. I don't think we're about to Deckard cane it right now, but I think I think we're gonna <laughs> I think we're gonna you know maybe chat a little bit. Okay. Yeah. As your tea is brewing, how who you're not really familiar with this wood elf character, and Ren, you're not really familiar with this masked figure, sit kind of awkwardly between two adventurers who don't know or necessarily trust one another, as tea is on the boil next to a fire. So, uh, you, you come here often? No. I absolutely do not. Um, Never been here. This is fancy. Yep. I wonder... Hmm. Kind of look around. It is a fancy kitchen. And you make a mean chowder. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna conjure uh, a mage hand, and it's just gonna start opening cabinets and stuff, and rifling through ingredients. But I'm not gonna move from where I'm sitting. I um, I'm gonna pick up what he's putting down and do the same with my invisible mage hand, and start rifling. As the two of you just kind of look at each other, like, mm -hmm. suddenly a bunch of doors, <laughs> as both of your mage hands begin opening and closing cabinets, looking for things around here. Both of you being very nonchalant, trying to pretend like it isn't you making that happen with your magic. <laughs> but suddenly the cabinets behind everyone begins opening and closing as you both look behind each other. Two very magical creatures doing very magical things. Which, hey, since you're both very used to it, this isn't terribly out of the ordinary for you. Before, suddenly, uh, with Ren's mage hand behind Hao, uh, you see several bowls, large stock pots, uh, various plants that are kind of uh, dried and saved for later. How there's a small little, uh, I guess the best word to describe it would be like a cellar-like door on the ground that your mage hand picks up. It's not meant to be guarded. It's just wood. Uh, it's meant to keep things cold deep down into the ground. And as your mage hand opens down into it, uh, you can see several barrels of open salted fish down in there. You could definitely make a decent chowder out of all this. I just imagine it's like Fantasia up in here where things oh, yeah. like floating around. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of you actually move. You just yeah, that's what there. I was thinking too. <laughs> As the mage hand starts grabbing the stock pot, starts grabbing all the rows, the thyme, some of the potatoes, wow. the salted wow. fish down from there, one fish Don't at look. a time. Huh. Pull out a deck of cards and I start dealing for cards <laughs> while it's just like happening in the background. Uh, as I <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, it sounds good to me. Let's do this. <laughs> Ren, you slide over a go small fish. Do you table. Know go fish. <laughs> I do. Oh, thank God. 
you slide over a small table for you to begin uh, playing cards at. Uh, you almost hear... Sounded like an accented singing. Somebody asking you to be their guest, be their whatever. As you, you fold out the cards. Uh, you, the GFY. <laughs> GFY. I will take one. The I'll guess. The I'll guess. Put the service to the test. test. Don't believe me. Ask the dishes. As uh. <laughs> Sorry, that's my wife's absolutely favorite movie. Uh, so I've definitely heard, <laughs> heard so it good. many a times. Uh, and God, the new one, Ewan McGregor. What a good, what a what an angel! Uh, right. So, literally, <laughs> the scene from Beauty and the Beast is going on in the background, two mage hands at a time. Uh, as you shuffle the cards, one of the mage hands is holding the fish while the other one chops it up to make the chowder. <laughs> so essentially, during this conversation, y'all are having a very magical chowder-making goldfish playing uh, contest. What I do need, however, though, is you to roll straight d20 rolls for luck to see who's winning at Go Fish. <laughs> 15? You are? <laughs> you I got a 2. <laughs> I was like, have you ever played goldfish before? You're like, of course. I fish all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so, uh, no, I don't have that card. Uh, go fish. But um, you said you needed magic earlier? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll take those eights. Uh, so, basically, my, I guess my idea is these are a bunch of people that want explanation of some kind. They seem to be put on trial. Um, you got any kings? Uh, nope. Uh, sure, damn. Nope. Okay, well, um, but anyway, with uh, them being... They're being put on trial, right? But verbal might not get them very far. If you have any sort of illusory magic, I can prod through their minds and their memories. I can create illusions of that if you can help me make those as full as possible. All the senses. We can make the townspeople and the counselors see what they saw. These people are coming in guns a blazing and they're angry and they're upset, but you cannot fight a memory. Got any twos? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can do this and. Uh, Ren slaps his hands together and this illusory image appears of like a, a white dragon just like swirt flying around in his hand. I, I can do that. That'll help. I can also do this and Ren like steps back from the table into the open part of the kitchen, rubs his belly and you just see this ring of swords just fling all around him and then stop. It's like, I got cool stuff. Yeah, the first one will be fine. I don't think we need swords. I mean, that was you sick. said they were angry and, you know, you know. Yeah. Um, but anyways, do you have any fours? No, go fish. Damn. <laughs> As that happens, we go back to Salt and Zania. Salt, at about this I'm time. Bro. What's up? On death row while they're playing cards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then you're like, and so, came here, two new people, Ow and Ren, seem like they want to help after summer, their prayers to the Whisperer, and I think that they really are here to help, and here, here we are. <laughs> Any questions? So, I have... I have a lot, but from what all you're telling me, it does sound like it's the party's fault that this happened. Not in I a. Mean, if you want to blame anyone, it's definitely going to be um, Gideon, who's now dead, unfortunately. That's what I, I was to say. To stop it. Ah. <sighs> Jakey's face got me. <laughs> That's what I was to say. Uh, the he wasn't that good a boy. <laughs> Gideon sounds like he caused a lot of problem, but I will say, 
Kind. <laughs> <laughs> now Hercules on the other hand. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Sorry. Stage face. <clears throat> yeah, it it was it's 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 been a challenging for us all. I'm I can only imagine how you, you all feel. Um, if I had a, a house, a town to call my own, I would understand how you feel. Unfortunately, the road is our house, my house. But my sister, I guess, is my house, and yeah, I'm sure you can understand how that feels. Right. <sighs> yeah, I do, I do. I lost, lost family here, not because of this, but here before, and I, I get it. I mean, you did help save Carlene, but I, don't, I can't say that quite makes up for the damage that was done. I don't think anything makes up for the damage that this god has done. I don't think gods should have the ability to do this much damage in the world. I don't either. Um, I, don't, I don't much care for them. I like the old ones. They never really bothered anybody. These ones are too involved yeah i've met way too many you hear uh you hear a you're here uh from the uh man smoking the cigar on the side carlene also kind of nods He's... Oh, I'm, I'm gonna do it just for gfy because but my character's not gonna do it gods huh what are they good for absolutely nothing sorry <laughs> you can give me a gfy if you want um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll leave it because <laughs> I had many things and so you you just beat me to a punch so we're good <laughs> so we'll cancel each other out um, as the three of them kind of look to each other I can't say that this is any of y'all's fault but I can't I also can't just say that nothing can happen if Dane were here he wanted you out of the town a long time ago. If Tonar were here, I, th I think he'd he'd be on your side. Obviously, if Alos liked you all, that's why he went to help you, but they're not. It's just us here right now. I don't have any personal connection to you. Carlene has some thanks to give to Gideon, but also it's his fault. And well, Whistler, you don't care about anything. And kind of nods his head. That means I think we're impartial. Only one side, really, and that is the side against the gods. I agree. We'll do whatever you need us to do. Um, if you want us to leave, that's fine. We are going to try to avenge what's happened here. And he sort of looks to Zin when he says that, sort of squeezing a hand, looking for like a nod or something. Um, Lioness, you don't mind me asking. Do you have people that you all could stay with for the time? I'd hate to ask that you leave the town, but that may at least put people's hair down, for lack of a better term. Um, I do, but it's they're kind of a distance away. Not all bad. Sorry, did you ask if it's not all bad? No, I said that's not all bad. <laughs> it, it's it's not. Um, it's not. It's an option. And yes, that actually. Oh my, um, does sound like the best option right now. I might suggest that. Oh, I'm not saying where you have to go, but just maybe out of the town for a little bit. If we can't help any more here, then we're probably going to go figure out what's happened to my sister and figure out what to do next. Um, I think it's been shown that we're not anywhere near the level of the gods, but if they cross our paths again, I'll do whatever I can to put them in their place. Yeah, um, this whole thing kind of started with kicking a god in the wrong area, so maybe just 
Maybe just lay low on that front for a little bit. But I admire your tenacity. <sighs> I'm sorry, I need to know. Um, do we know uh, the status of either Slip or Tink Cell? Uh, Has anyone seen them at all recently? Slip's fine. I saw him. Tinksel, I don't know. I hadn't seen her in a little bit. Whistler? Let's see, uh... Whistler kind of looks and just nods his head. He's alright. She's alright? But she ain't dead, at the very least. His voice is... And the best way I can describe it is Tom Hardy and Mad Max. Just very... Like, two, three words, done. Mm. Yeah. He did. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Salt, continue. Not all good, huh? Uh, so whatever you need from us, but that's everything that happened. Would say you get out of town for a little while. Leave. If you can leave by the morning, that'd be best. Earlier, the better. That's all I could say, but... Let us sort Can some we things stay out. In the castle tonight. Yeah, um, that'll keep us out of town. We may actually do. There's several rooms you can stay in here. We'll tell people that you already have gone. So maybe try and slip out in the morning or late tonight. Okay. Let's say the two of you, as he kind of leans back, looking to Carlene and Whistler, who. Yeah. Uh, again. Kitty and past, you said right, honey? Yes, yes. <clears throat> um, not only Gideon, but um team and Ada. Yeah, yeah that but um the the blonde fella, his his body's still under the the house. I haven't checked uh the middle of the town to see if I haven't checked. That's Whistler. where we left him, yes. Okay. Um, Whistler, you mind helping me, uh, help me bury him? I'd like to pay my respects, if that's all right. So they're just kind of oh. nods. And teams? Um, just, can I... Uh, should, sure, I'm sure we'll find him there. He's under there, I guess. Okay. Then that's fine. I'll vote. just leave and let us deal. Is there any okay. way that we can pay our respects? Whistler kind of stands up and says, mm, I'll bury him tonight. If you want to come to the cemetery, you can come. You're welcome. Whistler stands up says, I agree. Uh, before he starts just walking out, assuming that the matter's done, that his use here is also done, the heavy whiff of uh, just kind of dark, dark alcohol is lifted in the air as you, as he walks by you. Uh, you're not sure if it's whiskey or what, but it's the stench is potent at the very least. So just, All right, then... Uh, Stay in the castle. Please, just don't leave until later tonight. I'll try and tell people that this area is not safe, but I am going to tell them that you're leaving, that we think it truly wasn't your fault. Try and, try and sway them that way. So Town's been through enough, so. Um, She kind of side talks to Salt. Um, Salt, it doesn't feel appropriate right now, but I kind of want to ask about Otis collar. I know it's just an item to them, but you know, it means a lot. Um, or do you think we should ha depend on our new stranger friends to find it? Um, I think if we ask them when we leave in the morning, if there is any retribution, they probably won't affect us as much. Where right now everything's very hot coals sort of scenario. Right. 
You know, they're, they're only simple enough people sometimes. Thanks, Saul. And I hug again. Just, and tight, like, you can feel her trembling as soon as you get a hug, like, almost on the verge of tears coming out, but um, you pull away and she's composed. A sort of a, we, we walk towards, I guess, one of the rooms, Ryan? As uh, y'all are walking that way, um, Savage kind of just gives you both a shoulder pat before you walk towards the actual castle. As he leaves the area as well, followed by Carlene, all leaving the garden here, closing the door behind. You're going to head into the castle, but currently it is a nice solid breaking point here. It is 8 o'clock, so currently, uh, well, 8, 9, whatever. It is flat on the hour. Uh, how about we come back in seven minutes? So, oh, Well, it's 8.01 now, so we'll come back at 8.07. Six minutes. Sound good? Sounds all right, good. let's take a quick little break, and then we will do a giveaway and go from there. So we'll see you all back in six minutes. Bye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeehaw. Welcome back from a Red Wagon in break. We have two amazing gifts to give to you right now. Not only the first is gonna be a giveaway from Dice, but the second one is a surprise, which we will do as soon as the Dice giveaway happens. So remember, if you haven't done it yet, do your exclamation point LUD so you can win one of these beautiful Dice Boys from Hextech. Oh, color shifting. Oh, they're so nice. Oh, wow. Uh, if you right, we got 101 people. There are 86 entries. Get your entries in. Do it. Remember, you have to follow. Oh, sorry, Drew. And then me. <laughs> <laughs> well do it come on alex come on man let's go uh, follow whoa, whoa, whoa. exclamation mark lud you got this yeah give it just a few mm -hmm. more seconds that way everybody can do that uh and as soon as that's done we'll do the second surprise as soon as we reveal the giveaway winner for this one remember we do have a second giveaway uh that's coming on the other half so that'll be exciting too also <laughs> hey i see ribo mom in the chat so she's in. hi mom hey, ribo hey, mom. mom. Well, ribo mom Hello. It's stream hey, mom. mom. I'm claiming you as my mom too. She's, she's everyone's mom now. She's stream mom for sure. Stream I'm mom. In the mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I got pooping mom. <laughs> I a while because we're getting in some more entries now. I love the dynamic that me and Jakey always end up with our characters playing games together. <laughs> I feel like we've got these very tense scenes, and then Drew and Jakey just piss around in the background, and it's just always like the comedic relief, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's some kind of relief. I don't know if I'd call it comedic. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to go ahead and close the entries and pick a winner. <laughs> it's me. And the winner is Chav Hunter 86. Chav Hunter, Ooh. congratulations. Congrats. Have they won before? I feel like that's I don't think so. Name. No, they haven't won. How dare I say that? Congratulations, Chav Hunter. And Drew, show them the second surprise. <laughs> I have no hair anymore. Uh, it's all gone. Uh, it's all gone. Look for at that. free? <laughs> for free? <laughs> yeah, it's all gone. My hair, my hair, it's all gone. Can you, can you look left and right? Yeah. Yeah. So 13 kilos of hair. Drew, give me the blue steel. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Okay, now Magnum. <laughs> the same look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah it's all gone um i'm gonna complete so that and and oh thanks yeah. i'm gonna continue to wear beanies because my head is cold <laughs> how's it feel uh three and a half pounds on 10 years off the top of my head it feels great i can actually sleep at night and when i have to get up and use the restroom i don't have an 85 pound dog laying on my hair that i can't get up oh wow i just imagine you're like there shaving it and as soon as it's done shaving, because you're used to having to hold it up, your head just... <laughs> it did. <laughs> it did It did go forward. In fact, I actually had to walk over to my parents' house uh, to get the clippers because I was cutting off the individual dreads. And uh, I, my my head was just so, like, floppy. <laughs> it felt really weird. I hated it. <laughs> so, uh, Drew Dread Dice, DDDs? I still have all my dreads. Just not on my head anymore. I'm gonna sew them There's into a, a very beanie. limited amount of those that you can uh, make. Get your there are DDD 32 dice. of them. <laughs> Hold up. Did you just say you're making your dreads into a beanie? That is an no, abhorrent no, no. and terrifying I, I'm, I'm gonna idea. take a yeah. beanie and sew it into the beanie. That's worse. So still, still wear my dreads. So you're going to be the, the bad pirate guy from Critical Role? You're going to be wearing a scalp of dreads? Is that what I'm getting from that? 
Okay, just ah, leave me this thread I got in 2017. <laughs> just leave me alone. Oh, Bobo. Oh, Bobo. Oh, Bobo. You're Bobo back. Okay, I'm starting the next GFI giveaway. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, interim again. All right. Uh, right. Back to it. We just left. Uh, Salt and Zania were walking into the castle. You Can enter the same right foyer now, right? that was described before. Uh, looking at all the pictures on the wall, uh, several kind of large uh, polished stones that are on the side. It's a very, very nice castle. You see off in the distance, maybe about 50 feet to your right, uh, lots of clanging and cooking noises are coming from the kitchen, but you're currently alone. Uh, are we, we are alone. So I turn to Zinnia and go, Talk! Villagers, right? I mean, like, seriously. They just can't see further than their nose, really. Unbelievable. Sort of sigh. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, can you blame them, Salt, though? They did lose more than, like, a few hundred of their own. <coughs> yeah, but, I mean, like, some people see things better when stuff happens, and others just have their blinkers on. You can argue that, yes, you can see things better. I have my blinkers on, you know. I don't think you are. I mean, you think, you think about Arta, that's definitely not Blinkridge. going to question real quick as a pause to the game. What are Blinkers? <laughs> In the Down Under. Well, actually, so, so Blinkers are the two pieces of leather that go beside the um, eyes of a horse to keep the horse going forwards. Oh, good, They're not actually good. the Blinkers of a car. So, ah. yes, we would know what Blinkers are. Good, good. And that's, that's why you have your blinkers that, on. That's what I thought you were meaning. Yeah. I believe we call those blinders here. <laughs> Not down under, mate. All right. <laughs> <laughs> good. Just Fair was enough. trying to figure out your metaphor, you know. I don't live in Asterian, so obviously I don't know what a blinker is. But you No, know, that was know. a meta three, but that's probably why you didn't get it. Fair enough. <clears throat> Continue. Mm. IQ 3000. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, let's go. Let's go find the boys, eh? And then get out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but team's burial tonight. We can't miss that. I mean, we can. I don't know if we can go to it. It's kind of going to be dangerous. Uh, weird guy just said he was going to do it like nighttime where no one sees. Weird short sentence guy. No? Yeah, I'm happy to, to go with you. We'll get it sorted. Let's find out. Thank you. Y'all just find Rin and How just chowing down on some chowder. <laughs> Two different realities that have some part of living in right now. As Salt and Zania go into the kitchen where they hear... I just want to say that if you go to the Cambridge Dictionary... Be wearing blinkers is proper for being unable to consider other possibilities. <laughs> Just <Thank> you, Alex. <laughs> yeah, because Cambridge Dictionary knows what blinkers are. <laughs> the metaphor <laughs> makes sense for a modern day dictionary. <laughs> Sorry. As Salt and Zania walk into the kitchen, they see Ren and How chowing down on chowder, which of course makes sense. That's why they named it that. Uh, but several plates, uh, because they can't see the mage hands cleaning themselves in the <laughs> in the sink there, with buckets kind of moving up and down between these things. Uh, as wow, what a sophisticated castle! It has dishes that clean themselves for you. But you see Ren and How. Completely covered, like milk mustache of clam chowder, uh, up around them. You want some? I'm not in the mood right now. Thank you. We're good. That's really good. Thank you. Okay. There's a. If you're in the mood for something else, I mean, the mage hand goes and opens the cellar where cold things are kept and slowly pulls out like a bottle of booze. As... Just like does that like slow reveal. <laughs> As How uh, is standing there, uh, she's like, if you're in the mood for something something else, uh, suddenly, seeming to float for no reason, uh, a bottle of brandy and a salted fish being held up by some force by the tail uh, make their way up from the cellar. Uh, Zinnia almost reaches out for the alcohol and goes, 
I think I would get in more trouble for that. I I don't think I should. I'll take it. <laughs> Some for me, please. Yeah, I put my hand on Zania's shoulder and go, you seem like someone who needs nothing but trouble right now. And I go sit down and I start pouring drinks. I don't know if I can handle it, to be quite honest. That's fair. Well, whatever you're up for. Just want you to know that we're here. We didn't we're up for a burial, hear the actually, conversation, come, but... Come oh, keep us uh, safe. It's those kind of drinks. I get a bottle of wine instead. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> as you talk about a burial, uh, suddenly, oh, a bottle of wine appears behind his head. It's that, then. <laughs> it's this really, really dark red wine comes out of the cellar from down below, kind of chilled. And instead of these wooden goblet-like glasses, a couple of silver actual drinking glasses uh, slide out from one of the cupboards. This was a keep to someone with some wealth at one point, so there are actual silver drinking glasses instead of just like the wooden ones you were going to use for whiskey as uh, it slides out. Uh, suddenly, a cork pops, and the wine begins pouring into four glasses that sit there as How goes to grab one glass of wine. But everybody else, it's up to you whether you're going to have a drink or not. Rin's going to use... Uh, their mage hand and just grab the bottle. <laughs> hey, if you're going to let your emotions out, you got to let them out. As to everybody else, it looks like Ren force grabs as the bottle comes to his hand to start drinking it. Uh, Zania, salt? Uh, I sort of raise my hand and go, no, Zania probably doesn't need that right now. Um, you guys can either come and help us get to this burial, or you can continue eating and feasting but we have to leave in the morning early so i'll leave that up to you guys mm -hmm. come with yeah um good how it turns on the fancy so... stuff and let's go <laughs> how it turns so no one can see he lifts his mask and he drinks all the four cups of wine he poured and then slaps his mask back down and walks with everyone Ooh, if you're going to down four glasses of wine in shot-like fashion, uh, I'm going to need a con save. And Ren, you're also drinking straight from the bottle. I'll also need a con save. <laughs> okay. Though your DC will be lesser. Oh, no. 14. 14? <laughs> Critical fail. Oh, no. As Ren, it has been quite some time since you've had wine, and you've never had... Fancy wine, like mm. the rich folk do. This is and not like old wine. Four <laughs> percent wine. This is a solid twelve percent. This is this is very. Ooh, this is some stuff here, and you downed a whole half a bottle, which, based on the four cups that were pulled out, was the same half a bottle that How just downed in shot-like fashion. However, wine's just not really your thing. How you kind of, you just immediately swipe it and put your mask back down before catching up with them, and you set it down and immediately recognizing that as you set it down you set it down on a stone surface and the bottom breaks as you're the last one in the room you set it down a little too hard you recognize hey didn't mean to do that uh, as salt and Zania are already out of there you lay the broken top of the bottle there before you just kind of run after the rest of the group uh <laughs> trying to catch up to them uh, as they're going to some of the rooms to either wait for the rest of the night or wait out in the garden for it to be nighttime. I was going to say you'd probably actually also notice uh, on Rin the the color of Rin would fade a little bit as they've gotten drunk. What color would it turn to? Because what color fades from gray and white? Well, uh, they're they're currently... Wood elf. Uh, so they have more of a bronze tone skin uh, with like purple on the edges of the ears. Um, so their color is slowly fading. Very bronze, I see in the art. Uh. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> Safi could only do one thing, and that's the one she did. <laughs> I love it. Sorry. <laughs> Just out of the. <laughs> it's like, I have a tan. Look at me. <laughs> It uh, Rin, Rin goes reflection. translucent. <laughs> yeah, sorry. 
continue. Uh, yeah, so your tan begins to fade, and you start to look like you do on your art. Mm -hmm. Maybe not quite as much, but definitely dulled down. Definitely getting closer. Uh, Zinnia and Salt Seeing is your kind of leading the group. Where are you heading? Are you heading into some of the rooms to wait, or are you wanting to head out? What's going on? Um, we should probably try to see if we can find the guy who's going to be doing the burial to figure out where he's going to be doing the burial. He said in the cemetery. Great. Well, let's go find the cemetery, eh? Spider. Spider. Was that a spider? <laughs> no. It, it, <laughs> it wasn't a spider. Don't worry. It looked like fuzz. It was three of them. It's, it's, it's fine. It's okay. It wasn't it's okay. one. It's okay, Ryan. You're fine. The, the spider okay. can't hurt you. You're not in Australia. <laughs> the spider can't hurt you, Ryan. I'm in a new house. There's lots of spiders in here. <laughs> um, He said it was going to be the cemetery. <laughs> totally wasn't a frog. This <laughs> is a frog. Y'all aren't having a stream anymore because I'm shutting it down and burning the house down. <laughs> Just bought the house, we're burning it down. Yeah, for the insurance money, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Go so, ahead and stream that. <laughs> all right, so there's a cemetery. How close to the cemetery is the castle? Uh, so, you've never gone to the cemetery. You've only been to the inn and a few places around town. You're not sure where one is. You might have to ask around or straight search for it. Is Carlene still at the castle, or did she leave with everyone else, too? The three of them left the garden area and have <clears throat> since left the keep's surroundings. Mm. You all stand currently in the foyer, kind of deciding what you're gonna do. Before you hear a, you guys run into it sounds like a else? small bit of crushed glass uh, as Run come or Ren comes running from the uh, kitchen <laughs> to join all of you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. Are there guards here? Because there was someone that was keeping them from coming in, right? No. Oh. That was uh, all Savage alone? was at the door. Oh. <laughs> Mm. Oh, yeah. Just leave us in the castle all alone? Yeah. Currently, yeah. yeah. They should know better. Um, like it. Do you? Mm. So, uh, how? Yeah. Can you see over large distances? Um, define over large distances. Can you find the graveyard without going to the graveyard? Ah. Um. Is there like a town map or a directory somewhere? <laughs> I do have Tal a town starts map. looking for that. Um, are you looking for I... one in the castle or what are you asking for? Um, just specifically, like, directions. How goes and looks for directions. He shows that he, like, goes to, like, does the whole, like, mm, give me some time whispers as he slowly starts walking to the side. <laughs> and he's going to start asking for directions. Uh, go ahead and roll me a percentile. Percentile. Oh, also, um, while he's mm. looking for directions, he is going to peek outside and see if his servant brings him the collar. Does yeah, it have good. an hour to search? Um, that is a three. That is a three on the percentile. Okay. Sounds good to me. As uh, immediately then, I was like, "Yeah, of course I know where to go." Uh, or under his breath, you're just like, "Where do I go?" Oh, <laughs> in a low kind of whisper. Before you, you're like, you hear. I'd bury somebody to the north if I was going to bury somebody. <laughs> kind of like a, a laughing, like, whisper on the wind back to you. You're so funny. I forgot what a comedian you are. Man, I am just laughing so hard right now. I'm not going back to the north. You can, damn it. <laughs> as uh, you're, you're kind of talking to yourself as you go up to the doors that are out in front of where the actual garden is, just to look and see if your servant is there. You open it up as you see Robert sitting kind of cross-legged down uh, next to the door, uh, unsure as if he was allowed in here or not, just kind of waiting uh, as he sees the door open. Oh, <clears throat> I, uh, I heard you were all in there. I didn't, I knocked. Nobody, nobody answered. <gasps> and Rin turns around and runs back to the kitchen. 
Salts and Zinnia here, Ren, with a huge intake of air, run to the kitchen. How you're currently out at the front, where the garden is. Uh, am I allowed in now? I'm assuming so. You're staying with us. Okay. Um, stands up and walks in. How you look out. You don't see your servant. It hasn't quite been an hour yet, so it could still be searching. I'm going to give it like a mental command to just like write it on the, the dot of the hour, find me in the graveyard. Okay. You close the door behind you. Robert begins walking in the garden looking around. Says, what a place. Uh, Zania, you see how and Robert coming back from the door uh, before you kind of just nudge Salt to let him know. Uh, before you also see Robert and Hal walking back towards all of you. Where did it go? Hey, Robert. You were in town for a little while when we left. Yeah. Do you know where the graveyard is? I do. <laughs> I buried my brother there. Can you let Hal know so then he can tell us? Yeah, it's just north of here. I look up. Sorry. <laughs> you load the low on a talking to a deity esque figure of percentile roll. Of course you actually get good information. Um So Robert, um because I, you guys have all been talking about this. They're going to the graveyard to, uh, it's a memorial for a friend. I'm assuming you know who they are as well. Oh. Just want to prepare you for that, just so you're not caught off guard. Okay. Um, is this for team? I look at them. Okay. It's good that I, I would like to be there for that while we... What are we doing? What are we doing after this? The door flings open. Rin comes running out with a bowl of chowder. <laughs> Here. And gives it to Robert. Uh, say his name properly. Robert? Yeah. That's that's how I said it. I thought you said Robert. Oh, like you said. I was like, how dare nah. you? <laughs> that was a Robert. I heard the R. Okay. Are you kidding me? The person who loved him the most? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, as you're like, uh, here, uh, as the bowl is covered in sloppy chowder as you drunkily just shoved it in there, uh, as she says, oh, um, thank you. I, he grabs the chowder in his hand with his big, like, dragonborn, like, nail, almost like a spoon, just kind of. I'm going to have Ren and Howe together. Roll a performance check since you both did oh. a be our guess to see how good this chowder tastes. Performance, you say? Yeah. Oh. oh. It wouldn't 22. be a performance if we didn't directly equate it to Beauty and the Beast. That's, That's fair. That's true. I rolled a 22. I rolled a 21, so not as good, <laughs> but... Quite good. Quite good. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, um, yes, uh, I can show you to the graveyard. Come. Let's go, Zinnia. Robert heads towards the door of the garden and uh, opens it with one hand uh, before he just kind of keeps eating the chowder as he's letting y'all go through before he closes it behind you. You're all currently outside of the keeps area, uh, now able to see several of the people gathered around back in the spot where you were before. You can see in the distance, Savage is addressing the crowd, though it's too far away to really hear what he's saying. Um, are you all trying not to be noticed? Well, North is out of town, right? <clears throat> Depends on how far North he's talking about. Gotcha. And was the castle North? Castle's to the east. It's about midway gotcha. through the town. I can give gotcha, you... so we're still in the town. Yeah. You're still within the city walls. And it's not nighttime? Correct. Oh. But he's telling them that we're leaving, so if we do a big sign of leaving, I guess. 
Hey yo! <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Are we being stealthy, or are you just walking there? I th I think we well. I, I don't think this group could do stealthy. <laughs> Let's okay. just head away, head out of no, town. Definitely not. Rin has this stupid, stupid, shitty look on his face. Uh, as he's mm -hmm. down bright red cheeks but a grayish face uh, Robert uh, begins walking uh, on the western side of the keep going north behind it uh, it's, just, it's not far from here um, it's right on the other side of the, uh, of the stream um, it's nothing particularly large but it's got a few uh, few crypts for I guess important people mostly just graves for those of lesser Burial. Uh, uh, my brother uh, has his own tombstone here. Um, as all of you walk behind the castle, you can see this small river that's only maybe about 20 feet wide. It's it's a trickle of a stream. The water barely makes a sound as it's moving down through here. However, further up the river, you can see there's a dwarvish mill on the side of a stone building uh, that's either used for a flower or a powered hammer with inside this small little building here. Uh, so you can start to hear king, king, as if large pieces of wood from this turning mill on this river are being hammered down. Uh, but there's a small little pathway here, this little bridge that leads you over the river that Robert takes. There's a little cage here um, that is empty of any sort of animals, but it seems to have a couple different spots of where animals might have been pinned up. And it's right on the edge of this small little forest area where there's now, in the distance coming closer, some wrought iron bars, very much like what you would see in a typical graveyard. It's got the bars keeping people out uh, with the kind of more ornate bar to the very center of it. White dwarvish stone on the corners to hold and solidify all these bars here. And when you get closer to the graveyard that Robert leads you to, there are a few of those almost crypt-like things where there are either several families that had a little bit more wealth buried in one small little above ground area uh, or some that may lead further underground to larger ones but for the most part it's very crudely made stone headstones some of them white in that kind of dwarvish stone like you've seen the town be made in uh, but a lot of them just this kind of plain uh, grayish rock robert leads you into the graveyard uh and just, uh, we're here um i don't know what you're looking for but I'm, i might see my brother's grave i wasn't expecting to come back so soon but if you don't mind me taking a look. We'll join you. Um, he walks, uh, finishing up his chowder bowl. He says, um, he looks to Ren like, I'm not sure. Do you, do you, is this your bowl? No, but I'll take it. Thank you. Hands it to you. Uh, it's very clean. He absolutely licked it clean. Uh, heavy eater uh, that he is anytime he gets any sort of good meal. <laughs> And do a wave of prestidigitation to just like actually clean it and throw it in my bag. <laughs> you take a small wooden bowl from the kitchens. <laughs> um, you have a spoon that's on there, but the spoon appears to be unused as Robert didn't bother with that. Um, you go up the small little dirt pathway here that appears to be for single graves, not like very many family ones where there's two next to each other or anything. Uh, midway up it, there's one small grave that appears to have a, a shield on the edge of it. It's, it. it's an old shield. It's not very well made. It's pretty rusted at this point. But Sultan Zania, you recognize it from your brief travels. It's a rusted kite shield that looks to be Arakai's shield from before, uh, and a small stick in the ground keeping it from falling over. Robert kind of sits in front of it and kneels down, doing the same kind of thing that he did before, uh, very much like knees down, head goes down as he touches his forehead down to his brother's grave, comes back up. <clears throat> you can hear, he I kind of my... whispers uh, a little bit of something. Go ahead, Salt. I pop my hand in one of my pouches and pull out a rose and lay it in front of the uh, shield. Robert pats you on the shoulder and says, Thank you. He always did like red things. I'd appreciate that. I also go over and take a knee and say like a small prayer. Rin looks over to How. Who's this? 
You mentioned burying his brother here. Ah. Uh, so this is Robert's brother. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. As Zania and Robert with a knee kind of do that, like, football players right before a match starts kind of knee where their uh, hands are over each other. Um, <clears throat> you kind of do I, your uh, prayer. Go ahead, Salt. I turn around to the two, to Ren and Howe, and go, he was killed by a god, have some respect. And then turn back around. <sighs> Ren <laughs> turns to Howe and says, a lot of people are dying to gods around these people. Are we safe? No. I kneel. <laughs> <laughs> Ren's going to kneel too. Everyone now kneeling. Uh, Robert whispers something, which how? Roll me a perception check. Zania, being that you're right next to him, you get that he's praying in some way uh, with his whispers, but can't quite make out the words that he's saying. They're meant to just be to himself. It's more almost involuntarily with the movement of his lips that he's actually making any sound. 19. You hear through your whisper means Robert make a bit of a prayer. He says, I already prayed you once, brother. <laughs> Are you sure that your death wouldn't be in vain and that I would protect them? And yet, one of my friends has passed and another is missing. I will find her and then I'll see you in. The afterlife, but I will keep them alive for as long as I can. Death will not mean nothing. <clears throat> for he stands up, kind of signaling everybody else to stand up. For he, um, yep, good. How touches his book, and in a similar voice to Robert's, Robert hears in his mind through the sending spell. You have not failed, brother. Do you attempt to mimic a dragonborn voice like his brother's into his mind? Yeah, I think I'm going to. Because I like it. how hearing this, how is upset that Robert's putting so much blame on himself. So I think he would. Robert, instead of standing up slowly, jets up. All of you are just there during this kind of moment of silence, but Robert stands up. Did you all hear that? Huh? No, Robert. Robert throws his gear, his pack, and his weapons down and heads over to there's a small shovel on the side uh, of one of the graves oh, no. as he grabs it. Uh, as he, I heard him. <laughs> I, I grab his arm. Zania, can you help grab his other arm? I grab it. She says, no, I heard my brother. I heard his voice in the wind. Robert. You hear lots of voices. You've heard the voices before. But not... But not... Not his... Well, not maybe weeks he's now. Maybe part of now. Robert. The whispers passed on that message from him. What? He is gone. But the whispers still care for you. Don't do something silly. Uh, I, uh, no, I heard it. Uh, as he stamps once more uh, in with the shovel. Both of y'all roll a perception. Or not perception, sorry. <laughs> Persuasion. Uh, salt roll one. Uh, actually with advantage, because how helped out. Hey, uh, pers Persuasion of 18. Nice. As you do this... <sighs> It's not necessarily your voice, but it does put the thought of him to stop in his mind. But his shovel, you can tell the grave that he dug was not very deep. You hear wood very quickly uh, after two or three shovelfuls. And just the sound of that and kind of the thought of what he's doing kind of hits his mind as he's... You all didn't hear anything? I'm sure it was there. We hear lots of different things. You've heard some of the stories. I'm sorry, brother. I wouldn't... I wouldn't desecrate your grave. I just... Sorry. Could have sworn. How, how puts his hand on his shoulder and goes, I'm sure he knows. You love him a lot. 
He takes the dirt and begins putting it back on. The whole grave is a freshly dug patch of dirt here, uh, and so it doesn't look out of place as he puts the dirt right back on. Uh, he picks up the rose that you set there, Salt, that is now a little bit dirt-covered, and he kind of pats it off and sets it back down in front of the shield and says, Sorry, um... Sorry, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking. You just hear a hiccup from Ren, and Ren just meanders over and just gives Robert a big old hug. No need to be sorry, Robert. We're all going to do some crazy stuff. He kind of pats your arm that's around him. And just, um, thank Most you. Of Are you sad? Of course I'm sad. This is my brother's grave. And hugs are good. I see you like hug a little tighter. <laughs> Just <laughs> thank you. Well, Zania, we are here for team. Where is his grave? Good question. I don't know if they've made it yet. Um, short answer man said they were going to bury him tonight. Oh, he's not here then. How did you get a plot of uh, space for your brother? Who did you have to ask? It was, uh, it was a man, um, who was here, uh, I think he's the grave tender, um, he was sitting on a box outside, I just, I asked if this was acceptable, and Spade helped me dig the grave. Okay, well let's go find the man, and maybe we can get the graves ready. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, as Robert joins in, he picks up his pack and the rest of his weapons and stows them back on and kind of kneels and pats the grave one more time before he steps up uh, as if to follow you all um, to try and look for short answer man, as Zania calls him. Okay. Uh, if you're looking for that man, go ahead and roll me a perception and see if you can find him. Okay, that's guy. You want to help me look? Because I wrote a fool. I was, I was going to also ask if I was looking. <laughs> Guidance. <laughs> okay, okay. Perception. 22. 22. Okay. Uh, as Zania, you kind of pat him on the shoulder, and then you go to look around the graveyard best you can to see if you can find uh, the short answer man around here to see what's going on. It hasn't been much time since you all left them. You search for quite a bit. You don't really see anything. Um, this isn't a huge graveyard. It's maybe 100 by 100 yards. Not terribly many people are buried here. Wood elves aren't very common that they get buried in a graveyard. So since this town is half wood elves, half humans, etc., not that many graves needed to be tended to around here. Uh, as you kind of Look around, you don't see anyone. Hold on. You see multiple people. A lot of people <clears throat> coming your way from the town center. It's a lot of people. Only Zinnia sees it thus far. I don't see anything. Drunkard. <laughs> 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 This oh. is me muttering off in the corner, uh, staring at a tree. That's a lot of people. <laughs> you, you look at all the graves and go, that's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> that's a lot of dead people. Have you been drinking, Red? I know. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> oh, no, you guys. Huh? <clears throat> what? What, Zinnia? There. Oh, that's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're probably here for the same reason we are. Bury our dead. As several dozen people, uh, many of them just looking to be farmers, regular trades people, uh, but a few of them in nightly gear uh, come walking your way. Uh, behind them, you see Savage uh, pleading with them, saying like... You can just kind of hear his voice in the distance, but it's kind of drowned out by a lot of arguing. Uh, as their walk is more of a angry stamper in your direction with this large crowd of people. They come to the gates 
of the graveyard about 50 yards away from you all uh, and begin walking your direction. Savage again trying to get them to stop as he looks at you all and says, I thought I... I, uh, I he just kind of holds his hands on his head in frustration uh, as the crowd begins going up into your direction. Uh, give me one second. Uh, how about... Let's have chat name this person. Chat, give me the name of a grieving, dying fa uh, a, a father who's grieving their child who passed recently from the events. As this is happening and as we're getting a name, uh, what a generic name, Brian, by any other name. <laughs> Nedward. <laughs> Nedward. Bartholomew, oh. Bob, John, Brognar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to go with Brognar. Uh, so, Brognar. this dwarvish man with very, very bright blonde beard, uh, short, uh, curled as if he might work some of the forges and fire has caught them quite a few times. Bushy eyebrows that go very, very heavy and cauliflower ears uh, as if he once was a bruiser or a fighter of sorts comes at the front of this group stomping towards you all. You can see soot stained face uh, a few drips and lines as if tears have come down uh, from his eyes as he marches up towards you all he's got a, a, a apron a smith's apron on the side with a hammer there as a few people are rushing behind him as if he's kind of the leader of this what is best described as an angry mob heading your direction as he points at the lot of you says you you can't even you can't even let us sit here and grieve. I don't care. It is your fault. You're supposed to be gone. I I, I got this. And Rin's gonna walk up. You, I've got no problem with you, Woodman. Get out of the way. Let me speak to the wait, Rattling. Wait, 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 wait. They're grieving too. I have heard this story now three times. And in the story, I've heard it three times. It's not their fault. What? I understand. You have to be angry at someone. So yes, it's it's them. What? They're leaving in the morning. I'm going with them. But they lost people too. And like Rin's fingers like kind of all over the place. What? <laughs> Roll a dexterity check. Real quick, at disadvantage. I've got something else planned if this is what I think is about to happen. Uh-oh, Um, a disadvantage, that's a three, but if it's what I think it is, I'm gonna take a reaction and cast shield. It's not what you think it is. <laughs> okay. Instead, you're pointing at him like, I help them, and your hand goes a little too far as you nick his nose. Fuck. While you're trying to make a point to him. See, Sorry. You see? <laughs> These ruffians attract nothing but trouble. I drink I it. No ruffian. Their way celebrating with drink after what they done. But they're not drunk. I, I, I'm drunk. Hearing hearing the word ruffian. <laughs> so it's like Excuse me, if we're attracting trouble, then I guess that's why you're here. Far out. Man, I understand that there is death around and it's horrible. This is I, the world we live in. You don't understand, Ratley. Oh, I don't understand. Where's no. my sister? From what I tell, gone from, from some traveler, not burned up by a dragon like my wee lass was. No, you Gone. don't understand. Same as you, buddy. Gone. Gone. Poof. You, vanished. You, you want to hit something? Let's go around the corner and hit each other until we can then have a drink together. But seriously, are you a man? I. Oh. He, he grabs his hammer and says, I'll drink to that then. I would like to hit you. Come here. Great. Uh, but wait. Two of their friends got crushed by a house. Are we comparing deaths? Is that what we do? Nobody had it worth. People died. Roll a We're persuasion grieving. at disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> Even at disadvantage, that's still a 20. Yeah. I have a plus 10. <laughs> As 
this dwarvish fella, he's a dwarf, so he's not terribly taller than you, Salt. You still have to be on your tippy toes, and he's leaned down, but it's not like a human's difference in height uh, as you get kind of up to his face. Ren, you instead get between him and say, Whoa! Hey! Hold on. Eric Raven, too? And this kind of drunk voice sounds like deep sorrow as it comes out. It's not, but it <laughs> sounds that way. As you're saying, they're grieving too. As he says, <laughs> Didn't he understand? I'm going to give him a hug. Oh, fuck. Ooh. You push past Rin and go for a hug on this dwarf. What well, persuasion from salt? Well, the dice don't lie. That's a three. No, no. As <laughs> did he understand? As you go to give him a hug, he shoves you to the ground as you get close to him. Kind of just anger hitting his eyes as he pulls his <sighs> hammer back. Says no. Don't you touch me. No. You also... He wanted this. Stand up, Rattling. Fight me. He tells you to stand up and fight him. I lie on the ground. Savage I gather is... potentially in mud or something. Okay. Zania, how? What are you currently doing? My arm doing? straight out. Do you feel big um, now, buddy? Um, I would like to use a bonus action to uh, telekinetically shove salt away five feet. <laughs> Towards the man or away from him? No, the man? away from it. <laughs> away from the man. <laughs> Just <laughs> go get him. <laughs> <laughs> Between his legs, then get him from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Just prove our point that we're terrible people. <laughs> Murder. Kill a grieving father. We roll into shit. Um <laughs> so that's gonna be a charisma save of fifteen. So if you want to avoid being pushed away. I have no idea it's coming from you, right? Mm -mm. I say well, you, you might because you would just see me reach my hand out, but you, there's a force behind it. 14 plus 2 is 16. <coughs> All right, you don't get moved. You you just feel a gentle breeze. <laughs> How you're not entirely sure. You almost you expect like a whisper to come on the wind, but you feel this magical wind blow by salt as salt. The hair on your arms kind of blows back, but the dwarf leans his hammer up. He says, no, stand up and take this. I've seen the seven lights more times than you have. Take a hit. Come on. <laughs> hit me. As hit me. He kind of looks at you. God, you, you can't even hit me. Useless. Well, oh, okay. Well, at least then, yeah. I stood in front of the friggin' dragon. At that, he will <laughs> hit you. As you, up. <laughs> as you say useless, he will hit you then. <laughs> you, cool. you had something going there, but now he is definitely going to hit you. <laughs> uh, he is a burly dwarf, and this is a smithy's hammer. So uh, you are currently prone uh, as well. So just have advantage on this uh, as he's going to go for a big whack on you. It hits. Uh, so... That is currently eight points of bludgeoning damage coming down towards you. He, you can see his hands stay, but as you, as you, as you egg him on, you're like, "Come on, hit me, hit me!" As you, uh, as he throws his hammer down at you, he doesn't strike you with it. He just throws the hammer down at you, and it cocks you on the nose. You can feel. I'm not going to dodge or anything. I'm just going to take it. Dislocate a little bit. Uh, blood immediately smearing on your rat-like face uh, as you look over. He looks up. Angry. Seriously, is that the best you could do? Fuck hey, it now, hey, 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 hey. Jeez. Stab it. And you. Hit me again. Hey, shush, shush. You shush. And you. You just hit an unarmed person. Rude first. Yeah, I'm a rat. I'm not a person. Thank you. I'm going to grab salt by the shoulder. Salt, so stop it. And I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at first level. <laughs> uh, as this is all happening, so you're. He's still egging him on. He's. He <laughs> 
continues to be like, stop. But you're like, oh, is that all you got? So Salt, yeah, he jumps onto you, putting his shoulders onto your arms, kind of like trying to get you down very much like a wrestler's like move. And he wails on you. Zania, you rush over to him and grab Salt by the shoulder, healing him during this. Uh, as Ren, you're trying to tell him no. Uh, Robert's also going to run over and try and tackle this guy off, but it's definitely not before he gets two solid blows into your nose there. That's fine. Uh, only one of them connects with enough damage. One of them just kind of grazes your cheek. As you can see, he's punching you with kind of angry tears behind his uh, eyes, and he's not with much uh, chutzpah. Um, so it's unarmed damage, which isn't much, uh, but plus a strength. So that's four bludgeoning damage is another one. Hits you in the nose, and it causes, you know, like if you get hit in the nose in real life, you all, your eyes well up without uh, actual intent. It just instinctually happens before Zania, you heal him. Uh, Robert's going to run to tackle this guy off of you. Oh, I want to get one more line in before he does, if I can. Oh, you totally can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does it feel good hitting a six year old? Make you feel any better? Hit me again if you want. I don't feel any pain anymore. I lost my sister. Go for it. At this time, uh, Robert knocks him off, and that's when you're like, does it feel good? Hit a six-year-old. Is yeah, yeah, I lost my sister. Uh, as Robert kind of pulls this dwarf off, he literally tackles him to the ground with a huge show of strength. Robert's a big guy. So he pulls this guy off. Now, currently, Robert uh, and uh, Brognar are wrestling on the ground. Robert trying to grapple him, and Brognar trying to break his way free. As Salt kind of yell at him basically very much what everybody's getting you're desiring the pain uh, from this person and wanting uh, this kind of comeuppance to happen to you uh but robert and this guy are gonna roll to see <laughs> literally both got eights with the exact same string uh, rin looks over at robert trying to thing <laughs> and rin rubs his tummy <laughs> and cast enlarge on robert <laughs> Let me do that roll again to see something. Salt, you get 11 points of health back. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, you heal it all back. <laughs> yep. Uh, as very much like uh, Harry Potter with Luna, a pixie. Your nose just <laughs> ah, kind of hurts when it happens. <laughs> uh, but it's this red mist pulls your nose back together as it kind of unbreaks itself there. Uh, Robert tackles him as they're wrestling there. They're kind of evenly matched before Ren feel kind of a queasiness in your stomach, but you cast out enlarged person on Robert. Uh, as Robert says, don't hurt my friend. <laughs> as what once was this like even mad, Robert's bigger, but now Robert's holding both of his arms as this tiny dwarf in his hand. The whole crowd kind of <gasps> gasps and move back. Even the knights, they kind of pull, uh, not knights, uh, but guardsmen, uh, oh, pull their swords or hal halberds out like, uh, uh, before Savage comes up, I see he's like, never <laughs> just trying to get this to stop. <laughs> but Robert's like, my friend, <laughs> holding this doll of a dwarf, as Robert is now the size of a small Etten uh, with a giant <laughs> black dragonborn here. Easily able to overtake it because before they had rolled, oh, 11 and 7, but I re rolled with the enlarge. That was a 19 plus Robert's strength <laughs> plus the enlarge bonus. <laughs> This yeah. guy is pretty restrained right now. <laughs> uh, Robert, be nice to him. Does Robert know his own strength at this point, would you say? He's probably the most level-headed of a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> I'll give that logic good. He's not going to accidentally rip this dude's arm off. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Holy... <laughs> I had to know. This is what we do. That's a, that's we a ruin good. lives. He's currently with all his might holding this dwarf back, and then suddenly just <laughs> <laughs> the arms bend backwards. I don't know, <laughs> but no, you're right. He's the most level-headed. That's a good argument. So yeah, now instead he's just holding this dwarf who's trying to struggle his way free, but has absolutely no chance of getting out of Robert's hold. Savage instead now comes with Ren between Salt and Robert holding Brognar up. Uh, about four feet off the ground as Robert now stands a solid 12 feet tall. Just kind of holding and preventing him from <laughs> from moving. I saw Strongheart say, yeah, I knew Ryan would think of that. <laughs> <laughs> as Robert holds Brognar, you can hear <clears throat> very much like what's described in like 300. The 
bloody, ghastly wail of a father who's lost their child and isn't able to get their anger out at this. They did a little bit, but not as much as they wanted, especially with the continuous egging on. And Salt, you keep trying to yell past Ren, who's like, no, stop it, Jesus. Savage of Inishili is like, enough! Stop it! But do not do anything stupid, Robert. Robert says, what? He was attacking my fur. <laughs> it's very like, <laughs> very like Andre the Giant uh, sounding. He was attacking my fur. <laughs> she says, I don't, don't do anything. He's grieving. He's allowed to grieve. And you, I, what is your, you all need to leave now. We're not leaving until we bury our friends. You're leaving now. They're gonna get buried. Carleen and Whistler are doing that, but can't stay. All I asked you to do was wait until nighttime or the morning, but you couldn't do that. You need to leave now. Savash, so, uh, that's your name, right? Yes. Can can we stay for it? Uh, you're with them, I thought. Yeah, but we didn't do anything. It, sorry, uh, it seemed that you were pretty adamant about being with them and being on their side. You saying you're not with them? I'm not saying we're not with them, but we're not saying that you know, we had anything to do with anything that's happened in this town. In fact, today is the first day I've ever been here. Robert said, it's true. <laughs> I, it Ren just like waves before. his hand at Robert. Robert's size starts going down. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it goes to chipmunk before it reverts back to it's true. It's just really, oh, oh, oh. As the dwarf now able to have a little bit more of a... Before Robert's like, I'm not going to hurt you. Just let, stop. Before he lets let, Brognar down. Let me and him and Rin's going to point at how at least be able to pay respects for their friend that died. They'll leave. We'll stay. We'll make sure it happens. Is that okay with you, Zinnia? Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise yeah. I'll take them on. Salt, no, it's okay. is exactly why you got to get out of here. Z Zinnia. I got no words. Why are you letting something like this happen? You and team, I thought, the level-headed ones of the group. Get him out of here. Like Ren said, we're mourning too. We're Ragnar. Going. Shake his hand. I shall do no such thing. Shake his hand. And then you two leave. Ragnar looks up at Savage with a kind of begrudging respect to him. Looks over and holds his hand out to you, Salt. I uh, I walk over and extend my hand out. He goes to clasp yours. I clasp it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were about to. <laughs> I did too, definitely. <laughs> so, I, I look into I look into his eyes in like the most intense, guttural, like a uh, visceral look, and go, "I will avenge everyone," and then let go and turn around and just start walking. Before you let go, his hard grip on your hand doesn't really allow you to let go. Uh, see, you're about to. Uh, you can see, like, a moment of recognition in his eyes. Roll an insight for me. Sure. I can never do insight. That's an eight. An eight. Not sure what you see. You're not sure if it's anger or admiration or what. But he kind of pulls your arms back and you kind of look up like, hey. As he looks at you and says... Better do more than that. See, lets your arm go. Oh. 
<laughs> Great. I, I would never reply back going, I'll do more than you would. Oh, oh my god, stop! <laughs> Rin! Rin comes out, stop it! <laughs> stop it! Ragnar goes to swing again, but Robert grabs him, you stand in between and push kind of salt out of the way. As, like, one of those continuous brawl happens that, like, just kind of... <laughs> So, you, uh, you feel a call. <laughs> you feel a grasp on the cuff of your collar before you, I'll allow you to make a deck save because you feel it and your roguish instincts can say to dodge out of the way, but you feel yourself about to be yoinked for lack of a better term. Sure. Uh, deck save, did you say? Yeah. 22. 22, okay. Uh, so... Because uh, they've asked me to roll perception, it's fine. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you feel your shirt getting picked up before you just pull your arms up to let your shirt fly off. Uh, as uh, Aldani pulls your shirt up and over, uh, as she was about to pick you up, <laughs> you're not sure what for, but Eldani from the crowd was about to lift you off the ground before you just kind of somersault away and instinctually kind of put yourself on guard before Eldani's like, I'm not trying to, just trying to get you out of town and help you out of here. I'm going, I'm going. Come on, Zania. Throws your shirt back at you. You just took the shirt off a six-year-old. Hold on, hold on. Is that able to come off? I got the prince's garb on. Uh, it is able to come off. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Zania, before you go, you mind signing this quick? And I open the back page where Robert's name is. You haven't failed me the past two times. Um, hey, if you can find that collar, that would you you don't even know how much that would mean to me. Just sign Working on it. Thank you. You see in a mixture of upper and lower case letters Robert's name with quotation marks around it uh, that you sign yourself far more elegantly. Uh, in his book um, before Hal closes it back up. You can see Ragnar, Robert, and Savage are arguing very heavily uh, as uh, Salt adorns his shirt back on. Eldani is like, I wasn't. Just trying to get you moving. I'm gonna escort you out uh, in a threatening way, a helpful way. We're still members of the guild. But fine. Go. Come on, Salt. I walk off with Zania. I hold his hand. Uh, Commoners. Hey, 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 Ren's gonna chase after him real quick. How loud does Salt say that, first of all? Just very, loud, very, very quietly. Okay, got you. I thought you said very loud. I was like, okay, well, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Not again! Missed, what did he say? I missed it. Oh my gosh. What'd you say, Commoners. Alex? Yeah. Commoners. Oh. <laughs> Ren? Ren's gonna chase up and say, "Hey, is there um, hey, any anything you want us to do for your friend? This is I, friends, right? Double friend." Yeah, um, just lay him to rest. He uh, he was actually rudely awakened from his eternal rest at one point in time. So I hope this can just be his last. Make it comfortable. I uh, go into my pouch and pull out a tiny little pillow. And I say, can uh, you put this on his, uh, his grave, please? Okay. Okay. Um, are we uh, are we away from the <laughs> angry group of people? Oh, no, not at all yet. Uh, you you like, two are maybe like, like how 20 far feet away. away. Uh, the 20 three feet? Okay, so it's away. enough to where I can, in a low voice, say, you guys should um, go back to the cave. And we'll meet you there. Sounds hey, good. that's a great idea, Ren. Well done. I'm not full of them, but I'll try. Um, here. And Ren's going to take some rations and stuff out of their uh, pack and give it to him. Thanks. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. Be safe. Thank you. We head north. 
Ren, you join the scuffle back trying to get people to calm down uh, with Robert. How you're more just looking at your book there at everything, just kind of waiting for everything to die down. This basically doesn't concern you uh, it, very much uh, as you're like, eh, whatever. <laughs> so you're more like, all right, I can, I'll help her if I need, but this guy, you yeah, know, whatever. <laughs> as uh, Robert finally seems to have Ragnar calmed down, uh, you hear some very choice words do either of you speak dwarvish um nope okay uh in dwarvish you hear a man a, a, a brugner a sputter of words before you hear savage so you're like rognar there are children here stop it not sure what he said uh but a few gasps kind of come from the crowd as he does before he runs back in. There are several other people seeming to be angry and more just saddened at what's happening, and Rognar says, hey, I didn't want to see that rat around here anymore. I don't care if he did it. Till that dragon's head is on a spike. Don't want to see him. Where he joins the crowd as the crowd seems to kind of walk off. Savage sits down up against one of the gravestones and says, Ads, hey, Robert, I mean no offense to your friends, but I'll, there's comfy beds. There's things to bide your time on. They couldn't have waited. This... Sorry. Three of you, part of this, you weren't here. Anger's misplaced. It's more frustration, you understand. I'm sure Whistler and Carlene will be back soon. You can do your uh -huh. burial and go. It's kind of addressing Ren, Howe, and Robert. Did did you know them? Well, not not Zinnia and. Salt, but uh, the other two? Uh, no, I, I didn't know much. I didn't even know the blonde fella at all. Dragonborn, I knew him briefly. He seemed to be the... And I use this term lightly, as they all stole, and that's one of the reasons that they were having troubles here in the town in the first place and how this whole dragon attack began. He was the most northern point in Compass. If that makes sense. Um, mm. But he was honest, at least. It seemed that I could trust him, but I don't know about the others. So, probably best that they're not here without him. Just for the two... Uh, well... Robert, I mean no offense to them. Obviously, you're close. Robert's like, no, oh, speak your mind, friend. Uh, just be careful. Without them, they're chaotic is an understatement. Mm. Kind of nods before just giving a sigh uh, and walking out of the graveyard, leaving Ren, Howe, and Robert there standing. Uh, you can look down as you see a small, now drying patch of Salt's blood in the ground. Kind of, Robert kicks over it with some dirt to hide it and get rid of it. Um, hey, Howe, did, did they ask you for anything? Salt asked me to put this pillow in the grave. Or on the grave? Ah, shit, I forgot. They... Kind of. Um... I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go to the outside of the graveyard and check for my servant now, because I'm assuming the hour's up. Yeah, it's getting there. Um, so... How says I'll be right back, leaving Ren and Robert there. How you run over to the front of the graveyard, uh, and as soon as you open it up, you actually hit something that's not really there, recognizing me immediately that you've hit your unseen servant. As you kind of say, like, 
should have stood back as <laughs> you close the door behind, uh, reaching her hand out. Um, roll me an investigation real quick. Ooh. Uh, using my bonus? Yeah, we'll use yours. Uh, 19. 19, solid. 18 plus 1. The servant hands you exactly what you're looking for. A collar with a literal dog tag. Uh, this kind of bronzish, goldish square on the bottom of it. Blue cloth uh, that it sets in your hand. Uh, seeming to come out of nowhere before dropping. Noticing that the servant kind of disappears. You hear the familiar mm. whisper in the wind of it flying away. <laughs> but it achieved what you set out for it to. Um, Hal's going to put it in like a small pouch just to keep it as like well kept as possible. Um, and he looks to it. Uh, and I'm going to use sending because now I can basically free cast sending to Zania. I have the caller. So... Do you want me to leave it at the grave or bring it to you? Please bring it, bring it, bring it, please. Can do. Thank you so, so much. Of course. As I turn to, I turn to um, Salt. Yeah. He he found he found the collar. <laughs> <laughs> As Zinnia turns to Salt and says, "One more time." <laughs> Uh, he, he found the collar. Who? Uh, what? Mask man. How? Who's collar? Ada. Ah, Ada, of course, of course. Okay, good. That's a good thing. Yeah, um, we might be able to bring him back. Ada. I oh, think. not team. Ada. Y yeah. Yeah. Okay, we can, we can look at that. Let's just get a bit further out of town, eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all are getting near to where the little porthole is that you're familiar with as Zania, you stop and say, you found the collar. It's you know, a few minutes that you walked uh, of that discussion before you get through the small little exit and leave out on the other side. Y'all are going to head to the north, correct, up towards the cave? Is there anything you're wanting correct. to be doing along this walk? I staying silent unless Ania wants to talk. I mean, there's a little hop in her step now because there's some good news, but not really. So you can take a point for the last scene. Very good. Well done. Um, mm -hmm. As go back to Ren, Robert, as Howe comes back over uh, and joins you, Ren and Robert, uh, as you sit there, Robert's like, truly, you're... <clears throat> I don't know what came over me. I, maybe there was something stored deep inside of me. I, I've never felt that big or strong before. Oh, that was me. Don't worry about it. Rin's going to lean their head on Robert and say, tell me about your friends. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, at about that time, how uh, comes back over when Robert's like, well, for the two that seem to be remaining that we'll be joining up with, um, so it's always been a talker, to be sure. Normally he gets his way out of anything. This one, he seemed to put his way towards that fist. Can't say I wouldn't have given him one myself if he had talked about my brother that way, but... Uh, pain and love, they... They go together. And yeah, normally is... I don't know, she's level-headed, but just let Salt do that, eh? Something must have changed in the days you know, since I've seen them. Something, they're different. I don't know if that's necessarily for the worse, but they are. He uh, reaches into his side and just kind of takes a, a swig out of uh, what appears to be a water skin uh, and offers it to either of you. Is that water? He pours a little bit uh, of it out. Uh, it's clear. Okay, cool. I don't need any more booze. <laughs> Can I drink some water? Take a sip, roll a con save. No, son of a bitch. <laughs> it's actually brick water. Um, surprise, this is a NAD pod crossover. 
Uh, that's an 18. It's an 18. You're fine. It's regular water. Okay. So take a drink from it. Feels very refreshing. Absolutely what you needed. You were dehydrated from only having drank <sighs> wine there. Yeah, you wipe it away. He offers it up to you as well, Hal. Um, Hal just kind of raises his hand and just nods. I'm good. That's good water. Anything the two of you are wanting to be doing during this time while you're waiting for the other people to arrive? I just want to know more about... Like, I want Robert to tell me about who he thinks these people are that he travels with. Okay. Well, including Summer and team. Of course not Gideon, because I didn't know him. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears> how <throat> oh, you would probably understand this, sir. I had been praying for some time for something to take me out from the scorch and offer me a new life. It's hard work living in the scorch with no money. But... They eventually came along and offered passage if I would just travel with them. And food. Their mm. friend was an unwilling once upon a time, if you've ever met one of them. But supposedly so. he the, wasn't. The, the, the people that are just usually bone? Yeah. Um, so, I, I felt that the God of Chat and Whispers had blessed me with exactly what I had been asking for. They do that when I pray hard enough, and... So be it, I followed them. My brother died very, very quickly, but um, it seemed to be divine fate. And, you know, he, mm. he never wanted to leave the Scorch in the first place. He would have been homesick, so perhaps that's for the best. Mm. But I trusted him. Summer was always quite kind to me, as was Salt, but he behaves quite differently now. Um, I don't know what's happened to them, what he's been through. What they've talked about makes sense that obviously that might change someone and the ordeals that they've gone through, but it just doesn't, doesn't feel the same, doesn't. I know this may sound weird, but he doesn't even hug the same. It is weird. It just feels oh, distant, um, detached. Being on the road can change you very quickly, Robert. Uh, you know, heard them mention that they're six, so if that means anything, I'm sure they seem mature enough, but things could shift like the wind. You know that. They're rattlings. How long do they live? Seven, eight years? I don't know. Maybe they're old. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just not familiar. Yeah. But, um... You understand the urge, though, how I assume. Yeah. I, um... I understand. That's it. They helped me, and even though it caused problems, I don't think that it was their fault, necessarily. I think trouble just seems to follow them. Maybe it won't anymore. Maybe it followed one of the other two that passed. Or even Summer, who's not here. We'll see. It doesn't seem that way. And uh, Ren looks down at that little bloody spot from salt. It's fair. Fair to say. Yeah. Well, Before we do the burial, I'm going to take a quick walk. If you guys want to join me, you're more than welcome. But um, this has been some heavy stuff, and uh. I kind of want to wander for a bit. <laughs> Wondering is good for the soul, good for the heart. Let's go. You basically <laughs> and have had Rin's, to, like, Rin's energy it lifts back up. Yeah, enough of this. The day is what you make of it. Let's. And then Ren immediately vomits. <laughs> Let's make it good. As Robert pats you on the back. <laughs> as Zania and Salt walk for quite a ways over towards the mountain. How you're mostly, I understand it, just wanting to get a walk uh, for of a, really just for wanting a walk's sake. Is there anything else you're wanting to do? I do want to shop and see if there's a place that sells scrolls potentially here. Okay. It's a very small town. You don't see much in the way of magical <laughs> okay. means. Uh, but roll me an investigation as y'all are just kind of walking around. And half the town is, you know, <laughs> uh, gone. 15? 
15. You ask around doing the best thing. Like, if there w- I understand you don't have scrolls. You have to kind of reiterate that to a lot of people. But if there was somebody mm-hmm. who had scrolls, uh, uh, where would they be? You ask for a while, but you don't seem to get anywhere here. That's, again, okay. it's just not a magical place. But as you're talking, Robert says, You reminded me. Oh, come. Uh, what I talked to you about before. Ren, uh, you, come with me. Oh, okay. Robert Wait. begins jogging off uh, towards the center of town. Does he just randomly run? Is that just his thing? I don't just know. Running I with, running with <laughs> I've only known him as long as you have. <laughs> Ren's gonna run along too. I just met these people, and this is the most I've run in my entire life. I, I know, my right? Legs. My legs are sore. <laughs> I'm a I am, wanderer. I am this is too buzzed. much. This is too much. I can't run very <laughs> fast. If you took off that mask, it might help. And Ren's gonna if speed up. To talk as I yell. <laughs> as uh the two of you catch up to robert he seems to have been rather than at a jog like a full-on run as he had this idea you get over to where it looks like behind just this small wooden shack uh, but as you get closer you hear a lot more king, 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 as if something's working on metal as you see robert like oh thank you uh, as you rush around the corner you see a man with uh, a ponytail around his head brown and smudged uh kind of, uh, I guess, powder, uh, just general oil from smithing work around his face. Uh, She says, Slip, I'm so glad you're doing all right. Slip says, "Uh, Yeah, hey, hey, buddy. Um, I'm uh, just one one more, uh, one more hit on it, and before he throws it back over, he says, Hey, sorry. Busy, busy, lots of things broken, trying to make nails to help out here. Um, what, what can I do? What can I do for all of you? Robert says, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> come, uh, come here. You see, pats you on the back, Ren. It's very, <laughs> it's not helpful at all. <laughs> says, he knows. Uh, he points to you, How? He says, he knows. Slip, you make locks. We have a very difficult gate to open. Could you possibly get us a key that could... Open a door. We don't even know what the combination is. Um, I've heard of these before. A skeleton key. Do you, could you... Uh, right, that's what we're looking for. Could you make a, a skeleton key? We're trying to get to the fairy world. Robert. You know, you heard him slip. Look. Are you by any means magical slip? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So would you be able to... Two questions. Question one, do you have any scrolls lying around that are magical? And question two, I am do you have so a- sorry. You meant in the literal death. I meant my work is. <laughs> so, no, no, I'm not <laughs> magic. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Rin laughs. <laughs> Thank you, Slip, so much for your time, Robert. You took what I said way too literally. There is not a physical door to the Feywild. I am sorry. We are looking for a portal. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't do locks or keys to portals, Robert. I'm sorry. I, if I could, I, I definitely do it for you, but I, I just, I just can't. I don't do that. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's I, I misunderstood. I don't, I don't quite understand magic yet. I slip. Um, it's good to see you. They kind of give themselves the like shoulder arm hug things. Yeah, absolutely. Hats off the powder that's now on Robert's armor. Sorry about that. Um, well, come back any time, man. I heard what happened. Obviously, I don't think it's your fault, but I'm not one to... Nobody really cares what I say. But No, then, <laughs> my condolences to the He was a good guy. There he was. We're about to do a burial for him if you'd like to join Slip. Um, I, I'm not... Is it a religious ceremony? It is going to be a group of people standing around showing that they respected someone who lived. I can do Mm. that. Yeah, I can do that. He was a good guy. I respect him. Uh, Yeah, I'll be there. Um, Hold on. Uh, He just takes a bucket and just pours out the fire that's there and says, 
nails and I don't want to leave this unattended. Um, let's sure. let's let's go make this happen. Then I'll just, I'll get right back to it. Sounds good. Hey Robert, did did your friends have any like stuff on them that would want to go to next again? I I don't know. I wasn't with them when they when they fell. Um, maybe. I look at Ren and do the this again over Robert's shoulder. <laughs> uh, sorry, I just figured if they had like you know stuff that you would you would you know the Zania and salt would want. I don't know. Huh? Would would this stuff possibly be described as meta in any way? Drew, not Ren. Sorry, just a question. Actually, no, it wouldn't because okay. there's a dead person, and they have stuff. <laughs> I just Ren doesn't know what kind of stuff. Just didn't know if you had something specific in mind. Because honestly, team has nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> except for some weapons and some armor, but <laughs> that's honestly probably smashed. I want probably a cool still. hourglass. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Let's see if we can help. Oh, you know for a fact that hourglass is done. <laughs> Uh, a house fell on it. <laughs> I, just want, I just love the imagery of how being like, what's that do? <laughs> they don't make hourglasses like they used to. Hourglasses in my days would survive any normal amount of house falls. <laughs> it do be like that. As uh, Robert says, can you, Scoop, do you know where the house fell? Uh, yeah. Uh, every, yeah, sadly, I do. Uh, let's go. Or slip kind of leads the way over to where literally the house fell in front of the red wagon in. What you do see though is Carlene. Uh, God, this is my own fault for blanking on the name uh, of the centaur woman. I think it was uh, Ilanda. No, it mm, is please. Eldani. Eldani, that's it. I don't know why I was saying Eldon, El, Elandi, Eldani. Uh, I have it in notes that I closed, and I didn't want to try and open them back up. Eldani, sorry. Uh, you see Carleen, Eldani, and uh, the man that you saw before kind of putting a few things in some sacks as you all approach. Eldani looks over. You can see kind of a, a bit of frustration and just kind of a sigh as you all approach she says the other two are gone right yeah all right well then it's just us we came to see if you know we could help or if there was anything we needed to give to you know their family i i would assume right robert yeah, if you uh, think you saw anything sentimental, it'd be great. I gotta, I gotta say that this is not a good descriptor for it, but jelly is the best thing I can describe here. There's not much. Uh, any of the pieces that we do have are fine, but um, gear is all but destroyed. Mm. We found... I guess, by some grace, both of their heads. Um, so, we're gonna... We're gonna bury them. As you see, Whistler holding up two what are burlap uh, bags here with some sort of dark liquid pooling at the bottom of them. Well. Wow. Yeah, it's not... It's not a good scene, but... At least we can bury something. Let's come on. Let's get it done. Okay. Well, Donnie, very straight to the point, very pragmatist, uh, walks. Uh, as she reaches over to uh, grab the two bags from Whistler to carry them, he hands them up to her. Carlene says, I I'll, I'll take, I'll take Gideon's. Donnie says, okay. Or she holds the bag and carries it along with everybody else. You all walk up the path through town back over towards the graveyard across the small little bridge where this little cemetery is when you get there Whistler heads on over there's a small shovel 
not the same one that uh what are you doing no it's bobo I'm sorry i i read bobo's thing i'm sorry that just got me really good oh no <laughs> <laughs> I really like the Animal Crossing one of that with Tom Nook that does it. <laughs> I'm glad that no one on YouTube is going to know what was Bobo, said. you definitely deserve a yep. GFY. <laughs> Somebody in the comments on YouTube can write it in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, you carry them up through the cemetery before Whistler grabs a shovel and begins digging small graves and holes uh he directs slip over towards kind of what is this small little shack on the side where he has some pre-made wooden kind of stone uh, not tombstones but like cross like things uh, that are more x's that kind of just denote that there is a grave here um, for him to put a tombstone on later uh, before slip comes back takes about 10 minutes or so for Whistler to dig both of these graves as he kind of does this by himself. Other people offer, some of you even may offer to help him dig this small little head grave here, uh, but he just kind of holds his hand up like no, as if that's his job, but he doesn't really say a word as he does so. Uh, he throws the dirt back off to the side or he uh, eventually kind of covered in dirt, pulls himself up. He digs a decent sized grave. It's a solid four feet down or so for these heads, so there's no chance of anything coming up. Uh, everybody roll me a perception real quick. Sorry, when you say everyone? Uh, everybody who's there. Okay. Sorry. That's a six. What was yours, Hal? Thirteen. Okay, sounds good. As uh, Eldani hands over team's head, places it down inside the grave, Whistler says, I'll, uh, I'll grab the rest of their bodies once we clean the house out, but this will do for now. Oh, I have this. And Ren pulls out the pillow and gently places it in the grave. With, and he, he stops for a second. And he doesn't know which one to put it in. And he's like, team, team, yes. Wh wh which one was the dragon? Dragonborn? That one there. He points to the okay. right. I put the pillow on the back. Uh, Carlene leans down and drops Gideon's head down into the grave. Poor Whistler's about to grab the dirt to cover him back up. Robert says, hold on, hold on. Before he reaches into his pack. Uh, and he pulls out a small bone he looks at and throws it in Team's grave as well. Or the rest of the dirt gets put back over, stamped <clears throat> down with the shovel. Covered up. Small little mound is there from where the heads were. Just the displacement of the dirt. <laughs> See, Jackie and Alex. Like, no! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why do we like this guy? <laughs> Chat. Get Ryan. Get him. What? This is not my fault. <laughs> Robert absolutely would be like, oh, this is my, my sentimental thing. That I, Teams being bad. I would want to keep team. with me forever because it's sentimental. <laughs> yes, I often keep the bones of my friends on me for sentimental reasons. If you gave me a finger bone, Ryan, I would keep it forever. <laughs> no, 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 I would, if I ever get in an accident and I lose a finger, I'm sending it to Drew. Put that on Do it, record. and I'll put it in a dice. <laughs> Always remember being boned by your friends. I'm yeah. Just what Drew does with the fingers? I'm just saying. Yeah. Have you? <laughs> wait. Mm. Wait. 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 Hold wait. Up. Wait. There's context to this. I swear. Hold up. <laughs> well. Uh, where were we? <sighs> Robert throwing a bone into the grave. Yep. 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 yep Ryan yep. just doesn't want to do the Kermit voice anymore. That's. I tried to. I tried. <laughs> I'm saying you can't go get it again. Grave robbing's an easy <laughs> profession. Yeah, Robert almost did that earlier. <laughs> As he throws the finger bone in, the rest of the graves are covered up. Whistler tamps it down, then he stands back. Uh, y'all, uh, y'all have anything to say? If not, I will. I have no idea who you were, but you both sounded nice. 
I was standing by Eldani acting overly sad. <laughs> <laughs> How overly sad? Uh, the kind of sad that might someone might need consoling. Being that Eldani doesn't know you and doesn't think that you're as standoffish as she currently thinks Salt is, she puts her arm down. Uh, but she can't really like reach her arm around you to console you because she's just high up. Uh, so she just kind of pats you uh, as you lean up against her horse's uh, body. Um, she's got this kind of like spotted uh, draft horse. Uh, feel to her. This feels basically like leaning up against a horse because it, it would, but it, one made of pure muscle. Uh, as it's comforting, though, the, the pat on the shoulder. Robert whispers something that no one's really able to hear. Um, how you can roll one perception for me? Uh, now one, so I don't hear what Robert says. Solid. A lot of whispers going on right now from the town and lots of general sadness. His just kind of fills up that other one. <laughs> Are you trying to make it so that How sees something in chat there, uh, Salt? Look, look, look go to chat, acts in mysterious ways. <laughs> <laughs> is the, is the grave on, chat, un un Bam, uncovered? Like, did he bury Take them already? Uh, he buried them, yeah. Oh. Um. <sighs> Mary. <laughs> <laughs> this is devolving very quickly. <laughs> so you can I'm... do it, I can't. Everybody just oh, starts God. spamming it. Is this Spam something it. that... I guess I'll ask the GM, do I hear this from the whispers? Roll another perception. Uh, I don't think I have a very high bonus. Uh, I think. Oh, uh, I 15. Heard bonus. 15 plus 3. You've, at first, you hear, like, no, no, the bone's important. You think that. You hear a few whispers on the wind, like, what? So, did you get rid of the bone? Before eventually, slowly, like a stream building up, a sudden torrent. Of sound saying, take the bone, get the bone, get the bone out of the ground, get it now, get it, get, get the it. Blood. <laughs> yeah, get the blood. Get the blood. Starts enveloping you. You, It's almost seizing like a migraine in your head. Do you hear these thoughts? It's all you currently hear. <laughs> um, How, like, gently pries from the hug and, like, goes over to the grave. Um... I think there was something buried that I would feel wrong if we didn't take with us. Um, can you uncover the grave for a moment? Oh my. And he does the whole like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> like, I hear you. Got it! <laughs> Whistler. Whip. I'm just so bereaved right now. I could just really <laughs> use that. I'm just really. Sad. <laughs> what? Oh, what are you trying to get? Uh, there was a bone thrown in by Robert. It was a keepsake. And are you saying this would... quietly so only Whistler can hear? Or yeah, I'm in my whisper right now. How? How is like fighting? Basically, like so, like speaking on an airplane. So he's trying to talk in a whisper, but he's like also like, oh my god, my head hurts so bad right now. <laughs> Got ya. Uh, so yeah, then it's loud enough to where everybody hears. Uh, you're like. Uh, there's actually a bone that I think would be very important that we get that. <laughs> uh, as, wait, you just need a bone. Just that finger one. Yep, that's the one. Yep, I yeah, would have greatly appreciate having a keepsake of a friend. You know, he used to be an un, mm, unwilling, so it's just a reminder <laughs> of our sweet bony boy. You, you know what I'm... I just would... I am grieving... <laughs> that is just where how house stops. Uh, I thought you didn't know him. I just knew the mess. The story really touched me. It just got so close to me. You know when you hear some great things about someone, and you just wish I was blessed with the opportunity to know them. 
you know, it's 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 a <laughs> lot. <know. laughs> it's, it's it's just and how how's going to like crumple and just cry in his arms and be like, "Are you saying I'm not grieving hard enough? Do you think cuz I didn't know someone I can't be sad?" <laughs> El Donnie even comforted me, and she probably thinks I'm a lunatic right now, and I just want you to know that this is a hard time for all of us, and I really, I just, I'll dig up the boat and I'll recover it, because if you're not gonna be nice to me, I, <laughs> I'm gonna look over the guy's shoulder while I'm crying at wherever I assume Chatter is, and I'm gonna give the bird over his shoulder, and then I just really need, I just really need you to help me help me <laughs> as you're literally grieving just just help me man just help me <laughs> it's like a, a brief little like middle finger to the general direction of wind comes towards you yeah you can definitely get an inspo for that but <laughs> roll a persuasion <laughs> natural 20 <laughs> <laughs> plus 7 that's a 27 when the stars align you hear <laughs> You, you hear Whistler. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> While he's digging, I'm gonna go back to El Donnie, but I'm gonna be just like full on, like oh, I could use a hug. As Whistler goes over to the dirt, he just kind of shuffles the top layer off uh, and pulls the finger bone up out. And walks back over. He gets that very quickly. You're only you only go to Eldani for like ten seconds or so. Uh, How Ren and Robert roll a history check. Hannah. Nice. Plus zero is a seventeen. How? Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't think my history is worth much. Fifteen. <laughs> Okay. Robert's got a 19. All of you immediately recognize. Oh. He definitely threw that bone at the bottom of the four-foot pit. Um, and he just basically plucked it like a carrot right out of the top. Yep, hate before, that. Or he pulls it. Oh, me see. Yeah. Is it the same one? Yeah, roll a, uh investigation if you'd like, if you pick the bone up. Robert says, huh? Um, no, 14? I, I gave that in there to honor my friend. That's part of him. He looks to you, Robert, more concerned about that. What'd you get on the investigation? Uh, 14. You're not sure if it's the same one or not because you weren't the one who threw it in. You just know that That's there fair. is a bone that you're supposed to get. I go to Robert briefly. I know it was for them to honor them, but uh, Zinnia told me it would mean a lot to them if... They had some kind of keepsake to remember their sweet bone <laughs> friend, and I just... Uh, yeah, I, look, I don't need to know. Uh... Oh, I was saying that to Robert. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just because so, I noticed Robert got upset, so that's what Fair I enough. say Fair enough. to them. And then I go back to crying <clears throat> to Eldani. Just need her to keep sick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, if Eldani, like, hugs me, whatever comforting she does... How how casts encode thoughts, and I put that encode thoughts in a bottle, and I write for Zania on it, and I'm going to capture the essence of being hugged by Eldani for her. That's why I wanted her to hug me. Oh, so wholesome. She gives you like a pat. Uh, she is done. Very much like a hardened warrior, and you're crying. She's like, <laughs> "All right, buddy, <laughs> you didn't know him, uh, but okay." So you get a pat. It's just so hard sometimes, you know, <laughs> to just... I mean, once I get the pat and stuff, thanks. And I go back to standing <laughs> upright, and I just lean at the back, and I'm pulling out another wine bottle. <laughs> uh, to you. Ren, you, you, several people very confused at this display. Uh, Al grabs the bone, puts it in his pocket. <clears throat> Takes a sip out of the wine bottle. Uh, okay. Um, the fuck just happened? The grieving process is different for all of us. Amen, brother. <laughs> okay. I, I get that. I'll deal with the graves at rest tonight. Y'all just... 
Best to be leaving now. Yeah. Thanks Have for at night. least letting us stay. I know it'll mean a lot to them. Yeah, yeah. All right. Where he walks over, he just kind of throws the shovel uh, off to the side over there before walking over to the shack. Aldani kind of turns and looks at all of you, slips. Like, wow. Um, I've, I've digging up a lot of stuff, but a bone. Okay, yeah. Yo, 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 yo. Always were different. Robert, my best to the friends. I wish I could have seen them. Um, sorry, I couldn't open your dim dimensional door. Maybe I can figure it out. But safe trip. Got to go get a few more steel from the dwarves and get working on the nails. We got to get back how we were. We'll get back. No time flat. No time. Uh, and hey, people are in the, the locks these days, so maybe I can help out in that end. <laughs> good, good. It's good to do free charity work like that. Slip says, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. As <laughs> Slip kind of <laughs> nods uh, and does a little comrade-like handshake. Uh, to Robert before he gives the salute to the two of you and walks away. To Lou. Aldani. Okay. <clears throat> I was charged with escorting you all wherever you needed to go in the morning, but I don't know if Savage still wants that. Do you want to go to a cave with us? Not really, if, uh... Yeah, that's where we're going. If he wanted to escort, you could come. I make a mean chowder. I'm just saying. What direction were you heading? I, I wanted to head east. Uh, we're going... I think they went north. The cave was north, right? Yeah. Okay. In which cave? Uh, uh... I don't know. It's a big one. <laughs> okay, big is all I need. I'll go with you to the cave and get you a few leagues out of here. It's all he wanted. I still don't see there's harm in that. They were grieving. I didn't mean them any harm. I was just trying to help the little rattling out. Loves, uh, loves, uh, <clears throat> loves a crazy thing. It'll make you do all sorts of weird stuff. I guess. Or uh, you start to hear the walking trot of horse hooves. Heading out of the graveyard and going to the north. Robert uh, begins kind of asking some questions. So, you just put your feet in the horse? Uh, as he's never seen a centaur before, uh, as he basically starts talking to her and asking several questions. As we cut over to Salt uh, and Zania. Uh, Salt, you're an adept climber, and Zania, with enough time and Salt, able to help you. I wouldn't see that there's much problem getting oh, up no. those cliffs and up to the cave. Um, but for the sake of it, Zinnia, only two climbs at advantage with Salt's help. Salt, would you help her? I definitely would have my tail assisting. Yes. Okay, just making sure. He's like, no. Uh, athletics. Two athletics, yeah, at advantage. How the fuck is a centaur going to climb a cliff? I don't know. You asked her <laughs> to a cave. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have to climb. 18, it's been an hour. Sorry. 18 and 24 for both the advantage roll. Or you did one set of rolls and then another? Yes. Cool. All right. So, yeah, salt, no problems. When you have enough time, Zinnia is actually pretty adept at this. You're not sure how she fell all those times before. Maybe now Even it's just like. experience. Yeah, cat like. Uh, she climbs up very quickly. Again, not like you. You could basically walk up it if you felt like it. Um, you get up to As the top. Yep, go ahead. Uh, as we get into the cave and sit down, I um, I sit down in front of Zania and I'm like, all right, so I need to tell you something. Um, it's just really only the two of us at the moment. Um, it's going to be hard, but I need to let you know that Salt's gone to go find his sister. And I'm taking care of this. And it just points to the body while he's gone. But you can call me Salt. Oh, that makes makes a lot of sense. Am I uh, talking to Famous Pepper then? 
I sort of have a little smirk and a wink. You got it, babe. Oh, it's... Can I hug you? I just have a really strong urge to hug you. It's nice to meet you. <sighs> you know what? Why not? And then Gazina gives her a hug. I, I just, I've heard so much about you. Um, welcome. Uh, let me know if there's anything I can do to help you get acquainted to taking over Salt's body completely. Uh, we'll just keep it between us lasses at the moment. Salt. 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 <laughs> really cheesy <laughs> wink. <laughs> it's very um, Zania. <laughs> Thank you for trusting me with this. We gotta stick together, right? We do. Uh, do you know how he's doing, at least? It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Oh. Okay. Um. Alright. Uh, What's for dinner? I I just appreciate everything you've done so far. Also. It's all good, hon. We'll get, there. We'll get through it. Thank you. Uh, what's for? I heard one of them makes a mean chowder. I just forgot which one is which. Uh, what ingredient? Well, I've got some scratches in the pocket. Beef jerky. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. We got some rations too, didn't we? From the uh, other one. From yeah. which one, Zania? From which one? Ren, Ren, Ren all right. But Zania is still shooketh that she just got introduced to Pepper. Okay, Jesus Christ. We, we, we consume and eat. <laughs> As Zania and Salt sit there and some questions kind of go back and forth, is you're like, yeah, that's not how it works either. Just kind of talking about what's generally going on with the pepper and salt thing, but keeping it kind of a secret and waiting for your friends to come. As it was, you know, only about an hour between everything else that happened. They went to get the bodies and do the burial pretty quickly. Um, you begin eating the jerky. Uh, the rest of you, so Ren, Hao, Eldani, and Robert, head through the forest. Um, Eldani has to go around the gate, but she's a centaur, so she can gallop pretty quickly because she can't make it through the small little opening that you all can that Robert leads you to. Uh, so Eldani has to go all the way around, but she meets you in the forest centaur. This is her home. Um, as y'all are heading north, Roll a survival check for everybody, because Robert's not the best. Uh, a dear Jesus. Hey! Natural 20. Natural 20. Wood Elf makes sense. How? Natural 1. <laughs> <laughs> Still grieving. Hey, natural, ah. that's what we want. <laughs> As, uh... <laughs> I'm so sad. Uh, Ren, they're like, okay, I think... The cave was, you're like, wood elf, come on. <laughs> as you start leading everybody through the forest, knowing back where things go. Uh, as you start talking to him, you say, you know, Eldani, there is something you're probably going to hate when we get there, though, just to mm. get drunk. And she's like, what's that? You're like, that's ah, more, yeah. it's better as a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> or you eventually get to the base of the first cliff as you're like, well, up we go. Uh, as Aldani looks up, and, you gotta be shitting me. As we'll stop it there uh, for the time being. Uh, it's a good place to stop. <laughs> you're all at the base uh, with them all trying to get up there. Possibly Aldani. I would very much like to see a centaur climb the cliff. <laughs> I can imagine a centaur with like spider a goat. walking. Yeah, it just goes like a goat on the side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so two things. Um, first off, one, glad that we're back for the next season, 2021. Yay! Yeah. Um, I guess uh, another thing, if you had a question for the fun fact that's down at the very bottom down there, what would it be? I asked it in the chat, but if you haven't gotten a chance to ask your question, go ahead and ask it. That way we can put those questions in for next time. And the last thing, if you haven't entered the giveaway yet, make sure you do, because we'll probably be ending that in like 30 seconds or so. We'll be following exclamation point lud bada bing bada boom oh we're at 88 oh, which we're, is we're how full. many people are watching so we're full we're going full. back in time oh back to the future ha so i guess i could different. just go ahead and yeah. call it oh absolutely it. okay hit us up oh no just kidding nope that's a ticket nothing 
<laughs> and the winner is Ribomom. Calling it. <gasps> Quatronome. 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 Congratulations, Quatronome and Banana Jakey. Banana <laughs> Jakey. <laughs> Congratulations, Quatronome. This was a pretty good way to really more introduce Ren and How to everything, while also letting Salt actually be the bruiser of the group that wants to fight people. Uh, you know, hey, some, stop it. Some <laughs> salt tank confirmed. <laughs> Just stop. Barbarian salt. Where is that salt? Pepper becomes a uh, barbarian subclass whenever she takes over his scrawny little body. She's a very bad barbarian at that because she doesn't gain more strength. But you'll do Just awesome, Robo. Just the rage. Wisdom, wisdom tooth surgery isn't that bad. Oh yeah, wisdom tooth is totally fine. So, uh, yeah. Also, if it wasn't apparent from in the chat, Agent Lady Hawkeye's character that we gave away for creating an NPC, her <laughs> NPC is Eldani. Yeah, uh, that's what they made. They made a really cool. Draft horse could like, and we're gonna kill shit. him on a cliff. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. So, is excited to introduce that one. We'll see how long the group keeps him around, but definitely is an existing NPC because if the group keeps going to cliffs, Eldani's just gonna say screw this and leave. <laughs> we'll thunder step her up and then be like, "No, you're walking unless you stay with us." <laughs> Go back down. Hey, is it all right if? I ride on your back. <laughs> oh, God. And then how from over the shoulder. <laughs> Robert's like, so who were your parents? How also? Like... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Right. Thank Silence. you, everybody, for watching. Glad to be back. We will see you next week, next Tuesday week. again. Uh, and, yeah. Good to see you then. And, love you, uh, guys. Bye. Bye, love everyone. You. Bye, I love you. Bye. Where's my money? You.